does just that. And it will be a touchback to bring it out to the 25-yard line to begin. So for Drake May, number one in the ACC in passing yards, second in passing touchdown since 2005. Players in the top five, obviously not only passing, but also rushing. Drake Bay and Amari and Hampton part of this list. We've got a couple of pairs of Tar Heels since 2005 that have put up incredible numbers. And the May, Amari and Hampton combination has been tremendous for the number one scoring offense in this league. Yeah, it has, and it's taken a lot of pressure off of Drake May. Last year, he had 184 carries. This year, so far, only 93, because Omarion Hampton has taken the load in the running game. And he'll begin on the ground and get about two and a half. We do expect to see some Caleb Hood and some British Brooks today for North Carolina because they actually believe the Heels coaching staff, they put too much on the shoulders at times of Amari on Hampton. They do feel that way, but when we talked to offensive coordinator Chip Lindsey, he also said, eh, we think we want to give him about 25 carries today. So <laughs> take that with a grain of salt. This guy's a very talented back, and they want him involved early and often. Made a throw for the first time. Scans the field. Finds a crosser. Bryson Nesbitt. The tight end gets loose. And he's across the 50, diving down to about the 41 of Clemson. And this is what I talked about with Drake May, just taking the simple completion. Easy, shallow route to his big dog, Bryson Nesbitt across the field, and then watch him go to work, moving the chains with the yak. They actually had him stepping out at the 49-yard line, and now a loss of one on the handoff to Hampton. Wrapped up, thrown back. Barrett Carter in on the stop for the Tigers. And you're going to see today that this Clemson front seven, especially the front four, might be the best in the country. When I watch the tape, they close the space. They are big people movers up front. So UNC cannot get discouraged when they run the ball early in this game and don't find success. They got to stay dedicated to the run game. Four-man rush. Now an extra rusher is added, and that bothered May a bit. A low throw at the feet of J.J. Jones. And after a big catch and run by Bryson Nesbitt to midfield, Clemson has now forced third down and 11. And this is exactly where Clemson wants to be. Defensive coordinator Wes Goodwin gets an opportunity to go into his bag of tricks on third and long and potentially bring some pressure. I don't think they need it because up front, they can get after the quarterback with just four. But sometimes you just got to dial it up and let them know what's up in those first possessions. May in trouble. Cuts it back. And he's to the 45-yard line to make it fourth down and six. Now, in our meeting yesterday, Mac Brown said, you will see us go for it in plus territory in spots where maybe we wouldn't in other games. They know they have to take chances against this Clemson defense to win the game today. They do, and you see them getting up to the line quick because they're trying to prevent Clemson from running any of their special sets. Now they got them in a predictable set here with single high safety. Look for them to try to attack some of these matchups on the outside. Well, you can see our go, no go analytics said they should be kicking here. Mac Brown said, we're going for it when necessary. And May's going to take a shot right down the chimney. Inside the five yard line, all the way down to the two. Taz Walker on the go round. First and goal here. And you see him set up the cornerback perfectly. Use the little arm, we'll push up there at the end. But Taz Walker is a bona fide deep threat. And when you give him an opportunity to run out the back end like Drake May just did, he's going to make you right. Flags down as the handoff to British Brooks is blown dead on first and goal. So a plot trying to play with tempo burns the heels for five yards. So now North Carolina will have it first and goal at the seven. And the false start isn't something that you want to see, of course, from any perspective of an as an offensive guy, but you like to tempo right after some of those big plays because you know you have the defense on their heels and you're trying to strike while the iron is hot. Right there, they got burned. That gets Amario Hampton back in the game. Morales in motion. Hampton, chance of tackle at about the seven. Gets close to the five. The ball popped out. A couple of Clemson players think they have a fumble recovery. And they do! The Tigers take it away! When you come on the road, the one thing you have to do is protect the football. You're going to see a running on Hampton when he comes to the line here. That first initial hit makes him chuck the football, and then he gets hit again as he's trying to gather it. And 
just like that. Clemson gets the football back. Big time red zone stop for that defense that's been playing out of their minds lately. Demonte Capehart stripped it out. T.J. Parker gets the recovery. And that ball clearly out. Now, normally, this is a script that is flipped between these two teams. Clemson has been bothered with giveaways all season. They're only plus one in the turnover margin this year. For North Carolina, first in the ACC, third in the country in the plus minus. They're plus 11 coming into today. They have feasted on turnovers, and they have not given it away often. So a big early momentum swing goes Clemson's way. Dave Klubnik to throw from the end zone. Well protected. He's going to take a shot. Looking for Tyler Brown. And overshoots the freshman. He drops that in, and Brown is gone. Ooh. Right here, if you play Kane Klubnik, all you got to do is give him a little bit of air so he can run underneath that. You know, it might sound counterintuitive, Bob, but sometimes as a quarterback, throwing to the wide open guy can be a little bit difficult because you're trying to be perfect. And I know Kate Klubnik is a perfectionist, but right there, take about five yards off it, give him some more air, and you got a touchdown. Phil Mappa for two and a half to make it third down and a long seven. Now, Omarion Hampton coming into today, the most carries in FBS this season without a fumble. A number I, by the way, did not have a chance to give before he fumbled. So do not blame any type of announcer jinx on me. It's not my fault. You better tiki barber that bad boy for the rest I, of the I game. I did have it written down. Third down, Klubnik from the goal line. Over the middle, right through the hands of Tyler Brown. So North Carolina dodges a couple of early strikes that could have found Tyler Brown. Clemson to punt for the end zone. And Bob, you know, we talk about this all the time. You got to help a brother out, right? HBO, right here, Tyler Brown, make that catch. Help a brother out, help your quarterback out. If you're Kate Klubnik, you got to subscribe to some HBO as well on the previous throw deep down the field. Help your brother out and give him a catchable ball. It seems as though Clemson was not able to capitalize off of that turnover, but they've also got to calm down and understand the environment. That's a tough son for Elijah Hussey. And he makes a fair catch near midfield. So for North Carolina, after a 40 window, first play of the game, Jalen Wright. 75-yard touchdown. Tennessee takes an early 7-0 lead over Georgia. Bob? Well, Matty, we are still scoreless, but both teams missing potential touchdowns. As a deep shot for North Carolina to Tez Walker on their first possession. Got them down to the two-yard line. A false start and a fumble as Drake May goes back to work. At time, short hops it to Tez Walker. And Clemson missed a chance on a deep shot as well as we go down to Chris. Amari Hampton, after that fumble, went to the sidelines, picked up a football, and the entire time held it in his arms as if, I'm not letting this thing go this time, went up to the offensive line and to Drake May and said, that one's on me, guys. I think he's earned their trust as he's right back in there. Second down and 10. Blitz coming. Hampton rollers his shoulders and runs right at it and picks up two yards. T.J. Parker, true freshman, who has been an impact freshman, to say the least, for Clemson, makes another stop. Yes, he has. And we just saw Tez Walker catch a big goal ball down the sideline. And the first two plays on that drive, they had the middle safety leaning towards his side the entire time. Probably a smart tactic to try to distract Drake May from throwing it to him, but that is his best receiver, so he's going to continue to try to get him a football. Walker in the slot right on third down. Instead, May looks left, lofts one to the sideline, and that's incomplete, hoping for Nesbitt. So that will be a midfield three and out for North Carolina, and they'll be punting to try and hit Clemson deep again. Drake May has been a little bit off. In these first two possessions, we've seen two of his throws go low. You see he's two for five for 67 yards right now. That was the big gain down the field to Tez Walker. But the main reason he's been a little off is because of the pressure that's been at his feet. The defensive line is co collapsing the pocket, not giving him enough room to feel comfortable to make those throws. That is what Clemson has been known for. And early today, they're already doing that. Tom McGinnis, end over at line drive. Green lets it bounce. 
inside the five. And they keep it out of the end zone. Terrific job on special teams by North Carolina as they have Clemson pinned again at the two-yard line. Drew Little running downfield to down a 49-yard punt. Very nice job by Drew Little, knowing that in college football, it doesn't matter if you're in the end zone. As long as the ball does not cross that plane, you can get them down inside the five. And here we got three's key. So today, this is a black Air Force Ones type of game. Do you want this? You got to go take it. And that means getting turnovers. Whoever wins the turnover margin today will win the game. Yin and Yang. Clemson has a dynamic one-two punch in Phil Moffa and Will Shipley. They got to get them going early and often to take pressure off of Kate Kovnick. And hotline bling. Listen, if you need a play, call Drake May. He's got to make a lot of them today. Here's Moffa. Right up the gut. He is tough to bring down. Gets a push, and finally, forward progress stuffed at the nine-yard line after a gain of seven. When you talk about Phil Moffa, I mean, you're talking about a dude that's 6'1", 230 pounds, and he carries his weight with him. Look at his yards per carries over the year, gone up every single season because he has finally figured out who he is, and I'm telling you, people, nobody wants to tackle this guy at the second and third level. Play action, tunnel screen. Well done by the North Carolina defense. They were there to follow it up. A gain of only a yard. And that's Clemson trying to get the ball to Troy Stilato, one of their shiftier, quicker wide receivers, trying to get the ball to their best players in space. Stick Lane came up, made the stick, and that injured the shoulder, it looks like, of Stilato. And that's not a good sight, one, because we hate to see anybody get hurt, so we hope that he's okay and can get back out there on the field. But also, they're already down their two best receivers in Antonio Williams and Cole Turner. So to get even more thin at the wide receiver position is certainly not something that they're happy about. Keeper for Clover. He's down the sideline. A little stutter step. Bumped out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Geo Biggers made the stop. That's a 22-yard quarterback run and a first down for Clover. Yeah, what you see, Clover's going to read the defensive end and don't get it twisted, people. This guy's not sneaky athletic. Don't you dare say that about him. He's a 21-8, 200-meter runner coming out of high school, a.k.a. he can run, run, and that is something that they want to see more from him in this game and through the rest of the season because they know it can be an addition to their offense. Shipley and Mappa share the backfield for the first time, and here's the jet sweep to Shipley. Cuts it back. Picks up about five and a half. Biggers, another tackle. Now, that was your traditional quarterback counter, where the quarterback's going to read the opposite defensive end, and if he doesn't jet up the field, he's going to let it go to the running back to the opposite side. That's why you saw the two pullers coming around to the left side. Great read by Kate Klubnik. Look for them to continue to utilize those types of runs to get him more into the running game. Play action.
of a first down. So it'll be third down and two for Clemson in plus territory. And what I'm anticipating here from Gary Riley is just another run. You're in plus territory. You get pretty much in fourth down territory as well. Trust your offensive line. Trust that back you have there wearing number one and Will Shipley, who we know last week ran pissed off. He's already started the day running pissed off and give him an opportunity to move these chains again. Stellato back in the game. Farthest to the outside left on third down. Straight ahead run instead. Shipley looking for room. Gets driven back. Jabari Ritzy made first contact a yard short of the first down. So now a decision for Dabo on fourth and one. Yeah, and you can see that line of scrimmage doesn't really get pushed back enough for Will Shipley to find an easy lane to get through there. He keeps moving those legs. It can't be done. you got to give a shout out to the big uglies up front for North Carolina for establishing that line and forcing him to make a decision here on fourth and one. This decision as Mappa back in the game for fourth and one. Clemson will go for it. Certainly got to watch for the hard count here. It almost worked, and now Plumnick looks over. And now a timeout call by Davo Sweeney from the sideline. So we'll step aside. Fourth down and one. When we come back, no score early. Called that timeout. The hard count seemed to get Des Evans for North Carolina to jump in the neutral zone. No one reacted for Clemson, and now they're going to punt. And you can tell that's why they're punting right now. They probably worked on that all week, wanting them. Hey, here's a fake. And we've got a fake punt, and that will go nowhere. The ball's loose. It doesn't matter whether it's recovered by North Carolina or not. This will be a takeaway for the North Carolina defense as they get the stop on downs. The direct snap. And Spector had nowhere to go. And Mac Brown loves it as his team for another possession has great field position. Oh my goodness, is that Tyler Davis? That's Tyler Davis, the big defensive tackle that they snapped the ball to. Trying to give that man on senior day an opportunity to get the first down. Makes you beg the question, why put your, one of your best players on the sideline of Will Shipley and not give him an opportunity to make that one? If you're going to snap it to your defensive tackle. But. Our ESPN analytics said fourth and one. You should go for it. I'm just not sure in the analytics department they thought that would be the play call. So another great opportunity for Drake Bay with field position. Pitch and catch. And Tez Walker picks up seven. And you see that motion back and forth by Omarion Hampton. He gave Drake Mead May that pre-snap key that he was going to be man covered, so he knew he had the matchup he wanted with Tez outside. Hampton. Short of the first down. Third down and one coming now for North Carolina. And you're seeing North Carolina continue to stay consistent with running the football regardless of the results. What you don't want to become is a throw-only team against the Tigers. So here, in a four-down situation, look for them to get Drake May involved in the running game. Hampton has the first down. He was only averaging one yard per carry before diving ahead there for four to move the chance. And you're going to see him run to that wing tight end set, bring the sit blocker across, and then get Omarion Hampton downhill in a hurry. In previous weeks, they've run that same set to run with Drake May, and that time they caught the defense off guard. May floating. He's going to heave one for the front right. Pylon drops it in. J.J. Jones. That's a North Carolina touchdown. Look out. What you're going to see is you're going to see J.J. Jones run vertical and run a post across and watch Drake May get to the outside on this play and allow himself to buy time to make this throw with the pressure to his left. Amazing off-platform throw. He found the Wi-Fi connection and dropped in a beauty there to J.J. Jones for six. So finally, North Carolina uses the terrific field position to their advantage. The short field touchdown. Took only a minute and 22 seconds. And that's a special throw by Drake Bay. 
as Jones has his second touchdown of the game. We set it in the keys. You need that hotline bling. If you need a play, call Drake May. Showtime. Also keep his eyes down the field to make big throws. It's the stuff you can't teach, oh, right? You can't teach that. Out to the 25-yard line, it will come for Clemson. By far, their best starting field position, as twice they started inside their own 10-yard line. As we take a look at the sophomore Kate Klubnik from Austin, Texas. He was a Texas State champion. Didn't play many close games in high school, to say the least. That has been a game management adjustment he's had to make with Dabo Sweeney. The last time North Carolina saw him, he was putting up touchdowns through the air and on the ground in the ACC championship game. 18 scores this year, fourth best in the ACC. And starting with a handoff to Shipley for two yards on first down from his own 25. You know, Bob, you talked about how he didn't play in many close games in high school. I mean, the guy was 34 and 0 in high school. I watched him out there. And when you look at the margin of victory in the majority of his games, he had one game that was decided by less than 10 points. So he is still going through the maturation process of how to make decisions in close games and not hurt his team, but he's grown extremely throughout this year. Shipley comes up four yards shy of the first down. Another tackle by Cedric Gray. Down to Chris. One of the things Klubnik still uses from his high school days is something that his high school tough coach, Todd Dodge, taught him. Dream the beautiful dream. So when he comes out, out here on the field in pregame, he closes his eyes, he listens to music. What it means is dream the perfect pass, dream the perfect read. He visualizes it. Once he sees it, knows that he has the confidence to come out here and try and complete it. He's going to try and visualize a third down conversion here. Bunch set right, third down and four. Well protected. Double clutches. Checks it down underneath. And that goes nowhere. Stellano is blown up. Will Hardy was there to make the stop. And it'll be a three and out for Clemson. And everyone's going to ask, well, why did he double clutch it? Well, it's because the coverage didn't dictate itself. And you've got a safety coming downhill on a shallow route. So if Kate Kovnick would have been able to just see the full field there, he could have hit a goal ball down the sideline in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Whenever you double clutch as a QB, most times that means you need to move on and progress. Right there, Cade should have progressed, and there's a chance he could have thrown a touchdown. So, so far, and zero yards through the air. Good punt. Goes into the 15-yard line. And he's brought down just shy of the 24. Now a quick word from Burbo. I'm here live on the balcony of this Verbo vacation home. And that turnover still smarts. Fortunately, with Verbo, you get the whole house. So he has the privacy to process all that emotion. It's always this year. Back to you. It's good to see Marty Smith there. Some ESPN personality not named RG3 picking up side work. <laughs> Bob, we're going to get you in a commercial, okay? We're going to make that happen so that you don't have to sit up here and get on me about these commercials. As long as it's one of those that's got the free samples attached. I'm in. Nay. Well protected. He wants another deep shot. Incomplete. J.J. Jones, the intended receiver. Excellent coverage from Sheridan Jones. When you talk about the total yards today so far, North Carolina clearly won it, right? 121 to 51. They came into this game thinking that they would have to do more, go for it on fourth downs, maybe do a couple trick plays because they think that Clemson is a better football team than them. But so far today, what it seems like is that their offense is getting the better of Clemson's defense. And if that doesn't change, it's going to be a long game. May on the slant, John Copenhaver, a first down. Although we did say to Mac Brown yesterday in our meeting, you do have a quarterback. That's a difference maker. And he said, oh, yeah, he gives us a chance in every game we play to beat any opponent. Yes, and one of the more interesting stats about Drake May is that he's got 24 straight games with 200 yards passing. So it's like every time that he shows up to a game, he's showing up to go out and go for the jugular. That's why right now his completion percentage isn't as high, but he's got 120 yards. And anyone would take 120 yards in the first quarter of any football game, especially in death battle. 
brief stoppage there as R.J. Mickens and Kamari Morales had their face masks tangled up. Had to be separated as Hampton breaks free. Amari on Hampton. Down the sideline. Home run speed for Hampton. Touchdown. Oh, my goodness. What a run by Omar got Hampton. We'll see if he had this ball all the way through. Look at him, Tiki Barber in it, holding it up tight. Let's see. Oh, it looks like it might have came out there at the end. Nate Wiggins punches it out at the very end. Holy smokes. The official signal touchdown. But if that ball came loose before the one-yard line and it goes through the side of the end zone, it would not only be Clemson football, it would be Clemson football out at the 20-yard line. Why you hustle, people? Oh, we're going to give you guys every single angle of this possible. But that's why, as a runner, if you're a Marion Hampton, you've got to make sure you run through the finish line, not to the finish line. But Nate Wiggins, man, this is extreme hustle. This will be on Sports Center's top 10. Let's see it one more time. He comes in, he punches the ball out, and right there, the ball is out. It does not look like he has passed the plane. Maybe we can stop it there for you to kind of see from the best angle. But right here, ball is now out, and it well, looks clear to me that he has not passed the Yeah, the ball, the ball lands shy of the goal line, so how could he have possibly had it on the opposite side of the goal line or even at the goal line? Uh, I, I think there's no question. This is a fumble, and it's going to go back to Clemson. Holy cow, man. We got to see where Nate Wiggins came from. Because if he ran this man down from 10, 15 yards back, that's a game-changing play right there. You could be down 14. It was ruled a touchdown on the field, which means it has to be indisputable evidence to overturn the call made on the field. But that looks pretty indisputable. The other amazing number is Amarion Hampton came into today with 206 consecutive attempts without a fumble. This would be his second fumble in the opening quarter. So these two pictures are from the exact same time. Further review, the runner fumbled the ball prior to crossing the goal line. And then out of bounds, my rule is a touchback. First and 10, Clemson. At the 20-yard line. So that's the second fumble for Marion Hampton. Both inside the 10-yard line. that we're so used to seeing from the Tigers. But man, oh man, Nate Wiggins, way to stay on it and continue to hustle down the football field and make a game-changing play. And off Mappa to start this drop. And you asked about the effort for Nate Wiggins and where he came from, RG3, it's a long run. Oh yeah, it was, and that's him right there at the top of your screen. Watch him getting blocked by the wide receiver, and he gets run past, and from the 40, he does not give up. This man ran dang near 50 yards to get Omarion Hampton and pop the ball out at the one-yard line. That's going to be teach tape for every coach around the country when they want to show guys what they, need, what they mean when they say hustle pays off. Elijah Huzzy down and injured after that run by Mappa with 1.24 to go here in the opening quarter. Elijah Hussey's got three interceptions this season, the East Tennessee State transfer. And here's the play, you see it, oof. It's hit right in the head and neck area, trying to tackle that big old back and Phil Moffitt. Hope everything's okay, looks like it might be something with his legs. Well, it's good to see he's able to at least walk off on his own. But this is the opposite script that has been authored most this season. For North Carolina. Again, they came into today number three in America 
in the turnover ratio at plus 11. And that man never fumbled the football. Two fumbles in the opening quarter. Clemson is plus two, and they've got it back. Mafa gets loose. First down. Now actually, the fake punt at midfield was technically a fumble recovered by North Carolina, so it's two to one on the plus minus ratio. Although whether that was fumbled or not was irrelevant. It was going to be a fourth down stop. And one of the keys that Dabo told us was the turnover margin. So they've got that going. Now they're trying to establish the run. Loved it to the sideline. Following the football and holding on is Adam Randall. And he drags tacklers into plus territory. Seems like everybody's a little struggling to hold on to the football today. But you're going to see the RPO right here. Adam Randall threatens with vertical speed and then bobbles the ball. And maybe that helped him break that tackle. I don't know. But I do know one thing about Adam Randall. This guy's got true bona fide track speed coming out of high school. He's finally healthy, and they need more out of him when it comes to taking the top part of, off the defense. But you saw those two runs by Phil Mafa, and then all of a sudden, Kate Klubnik now gets in rhythm using the RPOs to his advantage. And they will snap it one more time before the end of the quarter, and Mafa is lassoed down by Dez Evans after a gain of a yard. So, on eventful first quarter, 7 nothing North Carolina, but how many... The Tigers in business looking for their first points. Klubnik to throw. Sidearms one to the sideline. Trying to scoop it up was Jake Brenningstool. And it looks like he did for a gain of three. It's another third down coming for Clemson. <laughs> Jake Brenningstool there at the end of the play. Trying to get up and, and, and run with the ball. Not understanding that in college once you go down you're down. But they have talked about Jake Brenningstool and needing more yak out of him. If they want him to get more yak, of course, Cade's going to have to pick that ball up and give him a chance to make a move with the football. Bunch set right with Shipley and two tight ends on third down. Klubnik looks left instead. Throws the out. Tyler Brown. It looks to be good enough for a first down. And that would make Clemson three for six on third down. The tackle made by Cedric Gregg. 50% on third down is certainly something that they will live with. And Tyler Brown getting involved early and often is what they talked to us about this week. Our offensive coordinator Garrett Riley said that Tyler Brown is their most dynamic receiver. And we saw that last week with the one-handed OBJ-like catch. Back to Mafa, who ball busted it. He's got six yards, but an ankle tackle by Stick Lane saved the touchdown. There was no one between Mafa and the end zone. Yeah, I mean, you could drive a truck through the hole that he just ran through, and right there, Stick Lane just got in on his legs a little bit, and as you said, Bob, he almost busted it. Play action. One-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Stellato. First down. And what you're seeing now is Cade Klubnik being able to just operate the offense and matriculate the ball down the field. Not worried about making the big play of the spectacular play, getting his guys involved. But it was nice to see Stellato back out there after he came off the field with the shoulder. Mafa in the red zone. Jitterbucks and Pratt crawls down to the seven-yard level. You said he had that jitterbug. I like that. Watch him when he comes out of the backfield. It's that jump cut that you hit him with it, got inside, almost shook himself out of his own shoes. And now we have an injured Tar Heel. That's Miles Murphy. So we'll step aside for an injury timeout. Second and four in the red zone coming up. It's your Uncle Cooper. Sure, once in a blue moon, you might need your... Jalen Hurts, two of the best quarterbacks in the entire NFL. It's about the Kelsey brothers. And the Swifties. <laughs> I love it. I love After it. the injury timeout, Papa Schusen, RG3, Chris Button. Second down inside the 10-yard line for Clemson. Klubnik on a keeper with a cutback. Down to about the four-yard line, about a yard shy of the first down. Don Chapman. Made the stop for UNC. It'll be third down 
at about a yard. And you see Chapman over there, and then Cayman Rucker, one of the best defenders in the ACC, their linebacker, not falling asleep in the red zone, knowing that this is where Clemson likes to use the quarterback run. It's where all coordinators who have a quarterback who can be a dual threat like to utilize. Mappa on the 11th play of the drive comes up short. Dabo Sweeney faked a punt on fourth down earlier and came up short as well. Amari Gaynor made the stop. Now it'll be fourth down. And it's Amari Gaynor on one side and then going low on the other side was Don Chapman again. When you have your safeties up at the line of the scrimmage and you're trying to get them to squeeze plays down, they have to be willing to go in there and put their bodies on the line. Nice job out there by Amari Gaynor and Don Chapman cutting down Phil Mott. Mappa and Shipley in the eye. Klubnik instead looking for the push. He's got the first down easily. First and goal, Clemson, as they convert on fourth down and one. Oh, Bob, you love a good touch push there. Right there, the Tigers figured out how to get it done, allowing Cade Klubnik to just lean on the guys in front of him. And it's a copycat lead, even when it's NFL coming down to the top. He didn't even need the push with the surge of that offensive line up front. Five different offensive line combinations have been started this year for Dabo Sweeney. They've settled on this one the last few weeks. And now it's first and goal. Out to the edge. And losing a little real estate is Tyler Brown. Yeah, and you can talk about Tyler Brown losing some real estate, but the way that Marcus Allen just shot the gap right there, getting out of the way of that tried block from the outside receiver, that's what made that play happen right there and didn't allow Tyler Brown to get into the end zone. 14th play of the drive. Second down and goal from the three. Lovnick with only 43 yards passing to this point. He'll try and throw for it here. Slap! Just a really nice job with all the misdirection. And Brennan Stool is a big target at 6'6", 230 pounds. And uh, did you just see that Tiger right there on the screen? They're not just going to pop that up and, and drop it away. We saw that. A 14-play touchdown drive. Knocks the game at 7. Nearly five minutes gone by in the second quarter. And what you're going to see is a motion across. You're going to see the back come across. This guy's going to come across the formation, and Brittany Stool's going to run up. Uh -uh. Hit him with a nice little slant route. Beautiful job. Misdirection. Quarterback, get it up over the guys. Touchdown right there for Jake Brittany Stool. Clemson is in this thing. OK, someone just did laundry. No, I add Downey Light, so the freshness up. With a bunch of freshman touchdowns last week against Georgia Tech. And now 7-7 with North Carolina. He has a young team. He believes Clemson is a stock that you want to buy and buy right now because if Clemson was a stock report this year, it's been up and down. They started certainly on a low, losing to Duke 28-7 in the opener, but then shot up as they went on to win four of their next five. The only loss to FSU, then dropped a couple to Miami and NC State, but now they've won a couple in a row against Notre Dame and Georgia Tech. And obviously, if you're Dabo Sweeney, RG3, you are a victim of your own success. You're almost not allowed to have a down year in the eyes of at least some of your fan base. Yeah, I mean, like almost the entire fan base for sure. Amari on Hampton. About a four-yard game. Well, there was a well-publicized call to a talk show a couple weeks ago, and obviously Dabo Sweeney went viral with his response. We asked him yesterday, do you think, like, a talk show crazy really does represent the majority of your fan base? He said, no, the majority of our fan base is very supportive and believe that this program is going to be right back in the college football playoff before too long. It's going to be third down and six after we check in with Matt.
Yeah, Bob, also a mainstay in the college football playoff, Georgia. 10-7 at this point, second quarter. Carson Beck, good job finding the crossing route. 17-7, dogs in the second. All right, Matt, thanks very much. They're on their feet for third down here at Death Valley. And look to the top of your screen. That's the matchups they want with Nesbitt and Tez Walker potentially having an opportunity to make a play. Drake Bay, flushed, extending the play, tucks it under, gets the first down. Bumped out by Jeremiah Trotter Jr., but a half yard past the line again. We talked about how Drake May was gonna have to utilize his legs to get the defense as stout as Clemson's, and right here was a perfect example. Use the pump bank down the field because defenders sometimes don't even know that you're passing line of scrimmage and get out of bounds for that first down. Play action on first down. Came from behind, and it comes out sideways. I'm not sure that that ball was blown dead. Justin Maskell popped Drake May from the blind side, and it looks like they will rule that his arm was coming forward. So this is an incomplete pass. And we'll see right here if his arm was indeed coming forward. Yes, it was. The hit made it ricochet and come out a little weird. Justin Maskell with the hit from the back right there on Drake May. And those are the ones that hurt the most, Bob. I'm telling you, as a quarterback, the ones you don't see hurt the most. came up and made the stop. Yeah, very dangerous pass here by Drake May. You see him get his feet in, for, in the ground and get set. He knows he's got the big target out there, Bryson Nesbitt. You'd love to see him pull that one down and take that hit from Shelton Lewis off of his big time playmaker. And watch Tez Walker right here in the slot. Through the arms of British Brooks. Driven down by R.J. Pickens. You talk about British Brooks, that's their running back. They have him pushing up. Running and underneath what we call like a now route with Tez Walker running the box fade on the outside. Tez got a little held up there, and that's why he had to come underneath the, to British Brooks. You know, not, not ideal for your running back to be the guy that you're going to there on third and five in a crucial situation on the road in Death Valley, but either way, you got to make that play. So North Carolina with two fumbles inside the 10-yard line, both by Amari on Hampton. His latest came nearly at the goal line. That resulted in a 14-play touchdown drive for Clemson, and now they've got it back at their own 17. And we were he deserves some relaxation with the workload he's had of late. Klubnik the throw on first down. Incomplete. A couple of weeks ago, Mappa was handed the ball against Notre Dame 36 times, 186 yards. He tied a Clemson record for most rushing attempts in a single game. Shipley was out with a concussion, and he basically became like Walter Payton or Earl Campbell, Tony Dorsett. It was a flashback to the old days of a of a true workhorse running back. Yeah, it was, and Coach Sweeney said that he finally knows who he is, he's comfortable with that, and he knows that when he has to be the guy, he can be. Quarterback run to the 20-yard line. Goes Cade Klubnik for three, so third down and seven. And Clemson is three for seven on third down. Yeah, but I actually love the fact that Phil Moffitt's out there getting his Ray Charles on, playing the, <laughs> the piano, you know what I'm saying? Like, you talk about a running back that's 230 that'll run you over and sing you a melody? Come on now, that's impressive. This one on his body. Sap, the ball hits your hands, man. You got to make that catch. 
But if we're coaching both of those guys in their individual rooms, you tell Josh Sapp, make the play, but you also tell Kay Klubnik, you got to protect your guy across the middle, put it in his gut, and allow him to protect himself from that hit from the safety. Aiden Swanson kicking to Nate McCollum. And McCollum's going to let this one bounce. And he's going to cost his team some real estate by not catching it. As it rolls dead inside the 30, a 52 yard punt. Now our Aflac trivia question. Aflac. So with Jimbo Fisher being let go by Texas A&M, there are now only four active head coaches that have won a national championship. Can you name them? I believe I can. I'll, I'll wait. Yeah. One of them in this game. Yeah, watching our game halfway there. <laughs> Two of them are in this game. That's so. exactly right. Uh, who could the other one be? I, I mean, think you're going to get it. I mean, gosh, shucks. <laughs> it's not rolling off the tongue quite yet. Rolling actually is. I see what you did there. I see what I did there. Attaboy. Amari at Hampton. I bet he secures the ball this time. Ridden out of bounds by Andrew Makuba, but not before he picks up 19 yards. And just a really nice job by John Copenhaver inserting inside and getting to the backer, allowing Omarion Hampton to get out into the perimeter of the defense. And you see him, as soon as the contact comes, he's putting two hands over the ball. He's going to be focused on ball security for the rest of this game. Even though when he was holding with one hand the majority of the season, he had it nice and tight. May off play action. Long throw to the sideline, incomplete. Taz Walker tied up with the freshman Khalil Barnes. Second down and 10. And, and two things right now for Drake May, if you've noticed, a lot of these throws have all been very tight. It's one thing that Clemson's defense does a very good job of is eliminating the space and making you have to make tough throws. But Khalil Barnes, number 36, I'll tell you a little bit more about him after this play. Taz Walker, nowhere to go. Gets to midfield before he is driven back by Nate Wiggins. Again, a point. What a play right there by Nate Wiggins. You're looking at two Sunday guys, and I'm not talking about ice cream. Nate Wiggins and Tez Walker will be playing on Sunday, so that matchup has been great so far today. And when I'm talking about Khalil Barnes, his interception last week, I say he's not playing defense. He's playing to take the football away. He's always trying to be a step ahead, and you saw it right there with his coverage on the two plays ago. Well, the Tigers bring a blitz. They will on third down. May into a tight window short of the first down. Catch made on the dive by J.J. Jones. Now, again, yesterday, talking to Mac Brown, he said, given the opportunity, we will go for it, even if we're close to midfield. He's been true to that so far. They're going for it on fourth and two. Analytics agrees. And his main point was, we're not trying to keep this game close. We're here to try to win the football game and blow it out the water. So we're going to use all four downs as often as we possibly can. He also said, I've got the play best player in the game. Who creeps up under center? Is this a hard count? Nope. A quick toss. Hampton. Short of the first down. The oh, stop on downs for Clemson. Their defense takes it back near midfield. And who is the main reason for that stop? It's the corner. They're trying to get out to the edge. But look at Avion Terrell coming in on the outside. Let it be known that at Clemson, the corners tackle if you're the wide receiver out there you've got to make do a much better job of allowing Omarion Hampton to get to the outside JJ Jones got beat quickly and of course Jeremiah Trotter jr. the NFL legacy was also there to help clean it up a couple of legacy players Avion Terrell's older brother AJ was honored as part of a group of NFL players that are here back at their alma mater first round pick by Atlanta has now become an all pro and a false start will be called here against Clemson. False start. Offense, number 77. Five-yard penalty. First down. That's the first Tigers penalty, and the Rock Stars of Racing head to Sin City. Don't miss the Las Vegas Grand Prix tonight, 11.30 Eastern, 8.30 Pacific on ESPN. Additional coverage on ESPN Plus and ESPN Deportes in English and Spanish at midnight. Muy bien.
I've been in and out of Las Vegas for the Jets and also with some NHL games out there. You should see the setup. It's amazing. Klubnik <laughs> on the run gets back the penalty yards lost plus one. So that'll make it second down and nine. I mean, the setup, the infrastructure in a city like Las Vegas to get ready for a Formula One race, it's amazing. No, Formula One is amazing. And it's also pretty cool that they got the sphere there. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it yet, Bob. But oh, I've seen it. That bad boy is special. Shipley, a couple of more. So now it will be third down and seven near midfield. After getting the stop on downs, Clemson tried to keep the drive alive. This is a big play. You would think for the North Carolina defense as well to try and deny the good field position advantage. Yes, it is, and you got it. Cedric Gray, one of the best linebackers in the ACC, making plays all over the field. Third and seven in this situation, we've seen them go to their tight ends repeatedly. Cade has a really good comfortability with Jake Brenningstool, who is up in the slot at the top of your screen. Shipley breaks a tackle, flag down, and he is brought down at the 50 yard line. Power Eccles with a terrific tackle, and it looks like Blake Miller. The right tackle may be called for the hole. Holding offense number 78. That pulls the climb. Fourth down. So the power echoes making the stop on fourth down. Mac Brown declines the penalty, and here comes the punt group. Yeah, you're going to see right there Blake Miller holding Cayman Rucker, which sometimes if you can't block him, you got to hold him. But if, if he gets past you and you see that your guy, Will Shipley, has already gotten the edge, just put both hands up like you didn't do anything. You know, sometimes that might draw the ref to you, but it's better than getting the holding call because you're clearly holding the guy around his neck. I guess if you look up, you see the butcher. You got to hold him. You got to hold him. Right? Damon Rucker, a sub kind of player. End over end kick. McCollum lets it bounce. Into the end zone. It squeaked past Noah Hannafin. The wide receiver couldn't keep it out of the end zone. So it will come out to the 20-yard line for North Carolina. Ronan Hannafin, you got to get a hand on it, buddy. Come on, man. Some people just know what road to take. Those are the people who know. And Matt, we've got 418 to go in the opening half. A dive for Amari on Hampton on first down for a yard out to the 21. Remember, Clemson will start the third quarter with the football, so these last four minutes could provide even more momentum swings as North Carolina has to be wondering how they're possibly in a 7-7 tie. May looking downfield, incomplete, flag out. Yeah, Hampton was held, so that will give a first down to UNC as Jeremiah Trotter grab Damarion Hampton near the line of scrimmage. I mean, how many flags they're going to throw on the field? Felt like even after the play was over, there were still other refs throwing flags. Pass in the fears. Defense, number 54. Barber plays on a swallow foul. Automatic first down. Yeah, you're going to see Jeremiah Charter right here, number 54, wearing the number that his daddy wore back in the day. But you can't get too comfortable grabbing on the hips like that before the ball gets there. It's a technique that they do teach, and more times than not, the rest will not throw it. But when it's that obvious, they will certainly put the laundry on the ground. Well, he's a semifinalist for the Bednarik and Butkus Award, so he's going to the NFL, as is the quarterback for North Carolina. Incomplete, though, the back shoulder for J.J. Jones looked to be perfectly thrown, but Avion Terrell was there to make another good play. Yes, he is. Avion Terrell, you just see him get downhill. He's letting the sideline know, y'all can't complete that on me. You know who my brother is? Well, guess what, I'm him too. Nice play right there. We did get to see a, an absolute rocket from Drake May, but at the end of the day, his receiver was not able to come down with it. Bothered on the throw on second and 10. Aaron Carter all over Drake May. Third down and 10. Yeah, you're going to see Baron Carter coming off the edge. Hey, you would see you might want to block that guy. If that's Drake May's responsibility because it's a quarterback driven RPO, then he has to hand the ball off to his running back in that situation. He thought he could still make a play, but Baron Carter got on him so fast, he kind of just threw the ball to no man's land. Wants the big throw, incomplete, up the seam. Oh, 
Denver throws Nate McCollum flag down. Back at the line of scrimmage. Holding offense, number 75. That feels the climb. Fourth down. And before our referee so eloquently stated that holding call, you saw Avion Terrell shaking his hand, saying, oh, no, 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 Dikembe Mutombo style, you're not going to complete anything on me. And he did an amazing job of undercutting the route by Nate McCollum, using that pull-through technique, which caused Drake May to have to throw the football up over the top. So although it looks like an inaccurate pass, Drake May was simply just not trying to turn two negatives. Uh, it, they'll have two negatives happen and throw an interception. McGinnis with a line drive kick. Green runs under it and makes the first man miss. Gets loose. Flag down at the 50-yard line. Another flag thrown from behind the play as well. Yeah, there's a block in the back there for sure by one of the gunners for Clemson. Well, this will be a massive change in what would have been great field position for Clemson. Receiver team, number 15, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. You're going to see right there, just a little nudge. Sometimes it's all it takes. Affleck. All right, let's answer our Affleck trivia question again with Jimbo Fisher fired at Texas A&M. There are four active head coaches to win. A national championship. Who are they? We got Dabo, Mack, Nick Saban, and uh, who is our fourth one again? Dang, Nick. Man, who is that fourth one? Kirby Mark Smart. Marking Kirby, Kirby, Kirby Smart, something like that. Something think, like that. I think that's who it is. <laughs> the most recent, of course, calls Athens home. Back to back like Drake. Klepnik with a check down. Stellato, catch and run. To midfield. A gain of 18. And there they are, those active coaches. And for Nick Saban, we had to shrink the fun. I mean, my God, Nick, how long are you going to coach, man? <laughs> he is killing it. Screen to Tyler Brown. Wrapped up, thrown out of bounds by Don Chapman, oh. and that will cost North Carolina an extra 15. Oh my lord. Don Chapman thought he was in the WWE right there. He must not have got the memo that you can't do that in football no more. This ain't your daddy's football no more. You can't do that. That's the play. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Defense number two. 15 yard penalty. First down. Yeah, you're going to see him come in here at the very end. And he's landing him down with a side suplex. Man. Oh. Now, we don't want to be doing that because obviously we don't want guys to be getting hurt. But I know the people out there that say football is soft crap, uh, the, that say football is soft now, certainly don't like that penalty. Will Shipley said, you're going to do this to my teammate? Because guess who he just shook out of his shoes? It was Don Chapman himself. Made that man do the cha-cha slide right in the middle of the field. Shipley again to the six-yard line. Two and a half minutes to go in the first half. And again, Clemson will start the third quarter with the football as well. And you keep bringing it up because when you're in a game like this and it's tied and it feels like, you know, it's, it's momentum is shifting back and forth. If you can score at the end of the half and then also sandwich that with the score coming out of the half, that's what championship teams do. That's what really good football teams do. So this is a very important opportunity for them to come away with second. Shipley brought down behind. Came in Rucker. Watch this 
Shipley gets this ball on the inside zone. Kevin Rucker comes in, and he even punches that bad boy out. Allow him. Big number 98. Kevin has the junior to fall on top of that thing. I would love to get this junior to pick up and run with it, because I'd love to see Big Ben run down the football field. But at the end of the day, if you can stop them from scoring, like you've talked about so many times here, Bob, before the half to give your offense an opportunity to go score points, that's the beauty of football, man. That's the third time we've had a fumble here in the first half, recovered by the opposition inside the plus 10 yard line. So a lot of points have come off the board both ways. Drake May steps up in the pocket. He'll take off and run. Drake May tripped up, but gets all the way out across the 20 to the 22 yard line before he's brought down. And now we will get the clock stopping after a first down inside of the last two minutes. And what I love most about what Drake May did is his first initial read wasn't there, number two wasn't, and he saw the C's park. And he decided, you know what, I'm gonna run down the field and utilize my legs and get us out of this backed up situation. North Carolina has their timeout, strike back, set! T.J. Parker leads all freshmen in America and tackles for loss. That's his fifth sack of the season. Yeah, you're going to see T.J. Parker. Initial move doesn't work, but he stays consistent with it. And when Drake May tries to extend the play, once again, breaking to his left, he's right there all over it. Johnny on the spot. Kelsey a one on one about his season in the spotlight. Also a look back on Randy Moss's legendary Thanksgiving feast 25 years ago. Kick off your Sunday with NFL countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Interesting decision here as well as Mac Brown putting a lot of faith in his offense on second down and 18 after the sack. North Carolina called timeout. Yep. That might preserve time for Clemson to get the ball back again before halftime. I, I bet if North Carolina hadn't called a timeout, Davo Sweeney might have. Yeah, he probably would have. These guys are master mathematicians. Up in the booth, they've got somebody telling them, hey, you need to do this, you need to do that. But at the end of the day, they're trying to give their offense time to score. This is a big down for North Carolina. Frank Beck, underneath, and that will make it third down and manageable. Third down at about nine as Jeremiah Trotter came up and took down J.J. Jones. So now the situation, Bob, is the fact that if you're North Carolina running the ball here, could force Clemson to use their last time out. But if you're actually trying to move forward and go score here before the half, it feels like you have to try to throw the ball because either way, the clock's going to stop. And to the point we just made, now it's Dabo Sweeney that called timeout before third down and nine. And that means Clemson still has one timeout left. So if North Carolina hadn't called one on second down and 18, Clemson may have used both. I, I bet if that was any other quarterback yep. for Mac Brown, he probably wouldn't have called timeout, right? But he put his faith in Drake May that he could get 18 yards in two plays. Let's see what happens here on third down and nine. After the Clemson timeout. Five man rush. Man sacked again. And now Dabo Sweeney. I would think would call his final timeout as Jeremiah Trotter gets home. And what's so beautiful about this is the fact that they utilize this front. People call, sometimes call this a bear front, but this one isn't quite that. But what they end up doing is they have Jeremiah Trotter over the center, right? That causes all of these guys to have one on ones. And when they set up those one-on-one -on -one blocks, now you give your best pass rushers an opportunity to go against guys that are less athletic than them. And then when Drake May steps up, guess who's there on the spot? Jeremiah Trotter Jr. to force him to not be able to get out of the pocket. Beautiful defensive setup there by Wes Goodwin. It's not a bad punt because you don't have those shades on the, on the guards, but it's essentially the same thing because it allows you guys to get those one-on-ones and they certainly want them. Carolina using that timeout after the first down sack certainly preserved time for Clemson and a short punt 
to the 43-yard line. A fair catch made by Ham Green. This season for every field goal, an extra point made by participating universities. Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you to Allstate. So Clemson now out of timeouts, but the clock stops inside of the last two minutes on made first downs, and they've got a short field. So a minute 14 feels like a lot of time for their offense. Oh, yeah, it's a, a ton of time. And the most important thing for Kate Klubnick, you can't take a sack here, and it's that first first down that really gets this drive rolling. Focus on being high percentage here if you're Garrett Riley. And kate has got to have a very simple mindset. Go through your reads, get the ball out of your hand. North Carolina brings some pressure, and there's the quick check down to Tyler Brown. And his forward progress was stopped in the field of play. The officials say keep the clock rolling. It looked like Brown trying to get to the sideline. He picks up eight. But the Tigers go quickly. Another blitz coming. Another check down. First down. Out of bounds. Mafa stops the clock at the 45-yard line of North Carolina. And it's funny you say another blitz because when we talked to Gene Chizik yesterday, he said, I'm not going to sit back and just play base defense. I'm going to force Kane Klubnick to have to beat us with his decision making, force him to beat us with his arm, and we will strategically blitz him because he's been really bad under pressure so far this year. Protection, solid once again. Same ball is on time. Klubnick puts it on Stamata. First down to the 27-yard line, a gain of 18. And Klubnik clocks the ball. That's an interesting decision. When you get the clock stopped after a first down, you think you can get a play called. Yeah, but you see Cade Klubnik go through his read here. Stilato, nice job climbing the stairs to get open on that crossing route and then immediately get the ball back so they can get it set and clock that right there. I know you didn't like the clock there, Bob. Go ahead and explain why. Well, gives up a down that certainly it does stop the clock for Clemson but that creates a down advantage for North Carolina with as much time as is on the clock right now Let's see how they use the final 44 seconds Loved it. incomplete and now because you clocked it on first down now it's third down and 10 yeah. So a chance for North Carolina to get the stop with 40 seconds to go in the half. I understand it from Garrett Riley and Dabo Sweeney's perspective. When you have a young quarterback like Kate Klubnick, you want to be able to get a hold, a hold of him and know what is going to be called. And maybe they don't feel comfortable getting up to the line of scrimmage at this point and having him call the play or whatever it may be. But you're right. It does put you in a situation where you don't have as many downs. So this third and 10 is huge. Here's the blitz on third down. Klubnick, he's going to lock one towards the end zone, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Geo Biggers. Oh, Kate Klubnick just threw that one up for grabs. Now, there is a flag down in the offensive backfield, and Klubnick got walloped when he let the ball go. Will he get bailed out with a roughing the passer penalty? He might. This is a huge call. First and foul, worth your passer, defense number 33, 15 yard penalty, first down. Wow, Cedric Gray, the senior linebacker, number one in the ACC in tackles last season and up at the top of the leaderboard again this year, rubs the passer with the headshot to Clubman. Oh man, you look at Cedric Gray coming around on the twist stunt there at the linebacker spot, hits. Kate Klubnik in the head, and, and you're right, Bob. He 100% bails him out. I don't know if Kate could even see Giovanni Biggers back there. Maybe the band in the corner and all that blue made him like blend in a little bit. But Kate must be living right, and those prayers he said before the game are working. Mafa with a stiff up, out of bounds at about the 10 yard line. You can see the anchor from Matt Brown. And I understand why Matt Brown's upset. Cedric Gray is just going up to try and block the pass coming out of Klubnik's hand on the follow through. I guess his elbow, his forearm makes contact with Klubnik's head, but roughing the passer on that call? You put me in a bad situation here, Bob. Well, you're a bitter old I'm... quarterback, so you're the first person to ask. <laughs> I understand the call because it's a part of the rule book, but do I think that it was done purposely and it was roughing? No, I don't, but at the end of the day, it's a roughing the passer call. And now Matt Brown will call timeout to get his defense set and maybe to go out and get his pound of flesh with the officials. 
Let's watch Mac. I don't think Mac's going to spend any time talking strategy with his team. Instead, he's going to have a conversation with our referee, Marcus Woods, and he's saying the same thing I think we said. You're just trying to go up and block the pass here. Yeah, and I think what he was saying right there, you know, I'm a master lip reader. He's saying that his guy was actually going towards Kate Kovnick before he had thrown the football. So it wasn't like he hit him deliberately after the ball had been released. He was already in the motion of going towards trying to knock the ball down, but at the end of the day, he still hit him in the head. We see it all the time in the NFL. We see it all the time in college football. They protect quarterbacks. Yep. And if you make contact with the quarterback's head, it's almost automatic, it seems, that that flag comes out, even if it's not really violent contact. Exactly. It's a tough call, though. It's a, it's a tough call. ask of Cedric Gray there to not try and make a play. Second and five from the nine after the timeout. Clubman, swing pass, mop up. Spins out of bounds. Man. He got to the six yard line. That'll make it third down in the couple. I know it's a little thing, Bob, but when you see a guy like Marcus Allen go full out to knock out a guy's legs like Phil Moffa, and he has the contact balance to still stay on his feet, NFL scouts, they notice those types of things. Not only is Phil Moffa a big back who can run downhill, but he's also nimble, and he's showing himself very well throughout the season. Love it. Keeps it. Dives. I think he's got the first down. Very close. The officials will stop play, thinking they had the first down. Clemson was running up to spike the football. Now it looks like they will say it is first down, and now is the time to clock it. And there it is. So now they'll have a couple of cracks at the end zone with 13 seconds to go in the half. Yeah, so you'll see K. Klubnik once again. Quarterback zone read. Ooh, Cayman Rucker goes down. He pulls it outside. Find two, split two. It's sometimes hard when you're not the biggest player on the field to have the confidence to get your shoulder pads down and go get a first down just like that. Good job by K. Klubnik making that happen. Pretty close calling that a first down without measurement. If I was North Carolina sideline, I might have at least liked to see the chains come out. <laughs> maybe, maybe they have a chip in the ball, Bob, and they were able to figure that out. I don't know. So second down and goal. Flubbing. Looking end zone. Floats one. Bobbled. Incomplete. Terrific defense by Cedric Gray on Brenning Stool. He won the duel. Cedric Gray won the duel there. And you'll see. Brenning still tries to take it off the top of his head. But I'm not going to lie to you guys. If you if we get a review of that play from earlier, Cedric Gray was holding Jake Brenning still like a grudge throughout the majority of this play. So they didn't throw the flag, but nice job by Cedric Gray of recovering because he was literally on the ground all fours, got up, and still was able to try to defend that pass. A chance for North Carolina to hold to a field goal is the final timeout of the half for UNC is called by Mac Brown. And here's what I'm talking about. Cedric Gray is lined up in the slot with Jake Brittingstool. Now watch when he comes off the ball. Tries to give him a little sauce. Oh my goodness, held that man by his shoulder pad, but he got up and was still able to impact the play. So although it should have been a flag on Cedric Gray for holding, Nice job of him not panicking, getting up, and still being one of the best linebackers in all the ACC. So, although the first part was a negative, I got to tip my cap to him for the, making the second part a pop. So both teams now out of timeouts. Eight seconds to go, so. Clemson with a chance to take a shot at the end zone. North Carolina hoping for a takeaway, but at worst they're hoping to surrender only a field goal before halftime. Shipley and Mappa in the backfield. Klubnik steps up. Klubnik can't take a sack. Reaches the ball out. Touchdown! They say he broke the play on the reach. Klubnik by inches gets the ball in the end zone. Oh my goodness, Kate Klubnik hit him with the spin move. Now we're going to see if he gets 
puts it in, but watch it go through his progressions. Flat, not there. Middle route, not there. Step up. All right, now it's time to go. It's time to get saucy. Let's see if we slow that down and see if he actually is short of the goal line. This is going to be a close one. Watch it. Spin move. So here you're going to see it again. We're going to try to slow this down and see where the ball is when he hits the ground. His knees are down. Oh my goodness, it might be by the tip or he might be short by just the tip. Again, rule the touchdown on the field. Now so you have to have indisputable evidence that the nose of the football is short of the goal line. And I'm not sure from either of those two looks that you'd be able to tell. This one maybe. I think the nose of the football touches the goal line. You think it does? I, I think it's the right call. I think if, if I can't tell up here that they're not going to be able to overturn it if it was ruled a touchdown. But my, oh my. Just the tip here for the end zone, and that's going to be the determining factor of whether or not this is a touchdown. Howard Eccles and Jabari Ritzy combined to make the stop on Klubnik. And obviously, Klubnik not throwing the ball the risks. The rule of field stands. Touchdown. He risks no points before halftime because if he's tackled in the field of play, the half ends and North Carolina gets a stop instead with one second on the clock. So now you're going to see both of these angles are at the exact same time. And this is what I see. I see the tip of the football. His knee is down. That tip of the football has broken the plane. So everybody out there, if they tell you that every inch doesn't matter, it definitely matters, especially in the game of football, because it is a game of inches. And again, the call on the field was a touchdown. So you had to have indisputable evidence to overturn that call. And we certainly saw no replay where the ball was clearly short of the goal line. Looked like the officials on the field got it right. And replay back there called up. And Clemson's going to have a touchdown lead at halftime. I told you early in this game, Kane Klubnik was going to have to use his legs more. And right here, he used every inch of his legs and his arm. And then there's Tavo Sweeney. We saw him running out there in pregame. He was ready to roll. He's excited for his guys to go into halftime in the lead. Tomorrow we've got two featured college basketball matchups from the Garden on ESPN. UConn, Indiana at 1 Eastern as the Huskies meet the Hoosiers and then number 19 Texas will meet Louisville. An exciting day of basketball from New York City. It's a doubleheader tomorrow from the Garden beginning at 1 Eastern. Bob Schusen, Robert Griffin III, Chris Button here at Death Valley. So they put a couple of extra seconds up on the clock. Three seconds in all, but it looks like barring some type of fire drill play here for North Carolina or a crazy play offensively as it'll come out to their own 25 yard line. It will be a touchdown lead for Clemson at halftime. Wow. Clemson is 112. They've won 112 in the last 117 games. So 112 and 5 when leading at halftime. Well, I mean. Since 2011, the only team that's won more games than Clemson is Alabama. They're not too shabby at home as well as they are 65 and 3 at Death Valley in the college football playoff era. And they've got the half. The big touchdown down the field that he threw in the first half, but they've got to be a little more consistent here in the second half if they want to come out of Death Valley with a victory. And it, let's head down to Chris. Yeah, Matt Brown told his team at halftime he thought that they fought their tails off, just too many missed opportunities with the turnovers, particularly in the red zone. But he said to the guys, not a lot went our way in that first 30 minutes. The good news is we have another 30 minutes to play. If you can fight the way that you did that first half, we can find a way to win. And we saw Mac Brown's strategy in the first half, true to it, meeting with him yesterday. If we have fourth down opportunities, even near midfield, we are going for it. They are certainly playing to win. 
As Kate Klubnik back to work to start off the third quarter after he ended the first half. Nosing the football across the goal line, a slant here at Stellato. High throw, and he takes a shot from Chapman and is a little slow to get up. But an errant throw from Klubnik hung his wide receiver out to dry. And that will require Stellato, it looks like, to come out of the game. And you'll see on this slant throw, it's a little high, forcing Stellato to half to reach out for it. And then right there at the very end, Don Chapman with a little shoulder action to the face. I don't think it was done on purpose, so I think they're going to let this one roll. Mafa gets a bit of a shove from the offensive line. Stick Lane brings him down after a gain of four, so it will be third down and six. And that's the second time we've seen Clemson use that sip action from the tight end that creates a massive hole in the middle of the defense. And Phil Moffat just gets to kind of walk through that one. And you see him churning his legs to turn a run that could have been a two-yard gain into a four-yard gain. That's the beauty of having a big back like him. There comes a blitz. Klubnik lobs one down the middle, hoping for Hannafin incomplete. So North Carolina heats up Kate Klubnik, and he tried to beat the zero blitz with a middle deep throw. It's a three and out. And he took the advice from earlier in the game, give some air to the throw, but because UNC's D-line got to him so fast, his wide receiver, Ronan Hannafin, couldn't even track where the ball was because he wasn't expecting it to be thrown out that way. But Klubnik got hit really hard. North Carolina injury as well. We'll check on when we come back. When you order Domino's online, we'll... So North Carolina, a three and out to start the third quarter. And what should have been a fair catch is not, as Huzzy gets thrown down at the 25-yard line. Now, let's take a look at this week's college football playoff rankings. Brought to you by Goodyear, and right now Georgia handling Tennessee. Ohio State doing the same with Minnesota. Michigan got pushed by Maryland. And Louisville rounding out the top ten, surviving against Miami. As the Canes had the ball down near the goal line, inside the ten-yard line in the closing moments. Yeah, it's going to be a great finish to this year. I honestly don't have Ohio State in my top four. I have a Georgia, Michigan, Florida State, then Washington. So I'm interested to see how Michigan and Ohio State turns out. Drake May throws one behind Nesbitt. It'll be second down and 10 for the Heels as Makuba was there. And Andrew Makuba, what a story. The fifth of eight children. His family fled the Congo back when he was about 10 years old. He got relocated to Austin from a refugee camp. And a youth football coach saw him picking This run goes up the middle for Hampton and went over to Makuba and said, do you even know what this sport is about? He was just running around making plays. But no, he's an African immigrant, so he basically grew up playing soccer. He said, no. So you know what? You're coming to try out for my youth football team <laughs> this week. And he picked football up, and now here he is, not only at Clemson, but headed most likely to the NFL. 100 percent. And it's the guys that play the game the way it's supposed to be that so natural at the position. And there he is, part of the blitz package. And Drake May beats it. McCollum a first down. And you'll see Drake May is going to get McCollum the ball right out of this break. Allows him to get vertical. Would love to see that a little bit more in front, but you'll take what you can get right now if you're North Carolina. Just got a piece together drive. British Brooks driven back. After a gain of a couple, good to see British Brooks playing this year after he tore an ACL last year a couple of weeks before the season began. And this is what you were talking about earlier in the broadcast, Bob, how they want to take a few carries off of Omarion Hampton. This is not because of the fumble issues that he's had today. It's more by design to allow him to be pressure in the fourth quarter, which is something that they're also doing on defense, and we'll talk about that in a second. Again to Brooks. Driven back after a gate of two again. Monte Capehart made first contact. Another third down coming here for the Gates. 
And it's like when you're UNC and you're trying to run all these inside zones, you got Demonte K. Park, 320 pounds, Ruth Aroma Row, 6'4, 290 pounds, Peter Woods, 315, Tyler Davis, 300 pounds. You better start trying to run some outside zone and some counters, because those big boys up in the middle, they ain't playing no games. Saw Wes Goodwin loads up with five on the off the defensive line. May scrambles. May first down and more. Drake May with a slide. Another third down conversion for North Carolina to keep the drive alive as May picks up 14. And it's beautiful. Watch him work through his progression, find the crevice in the defense, and tell RJ Pickens, hey man, if you're gonna be a QB spy, you better be spying a little bit better because I got these sweet feet for you. Long throw coming back to help out the quarterback, J.J. Jones. And his forward progress stopped after a gain of four. Terrell, another stop defensively for Clemson. That's what I've been most impressed by from Avion Terrell in these corners for Clemson with Nate Wiggins. Is North Carolina is trying to get the ball in space to some of their receivers so that they can make a guy miss and, and start a big game. These guys have been really great tackling today. It's been a staple of all Clemson corners. Backwards pass. Looking to throw is Caleb Hood. And he'll throw it away. That's a smart play by Caleb Hood. The trick play was not there. And sometimes you see the inexperienced player force it. He did not. Yeah, we've actually seen uh, from Ali Gordon the second from Oklahoma State where he ended up throwing an interception on a similar play. If it's not there, learn to play the next play. Get the ball back to your star quarterback and allow him to have a chance on third and six and not throw the ball into coverage. Two for two on third down on this drive. May. He wants a deep shot, hoping for Tess Walker. Incomplete. And now a decision again for Matt Brown. They were hoping for a flag as Nate Wiggins ran step for step with Tess Walker. Fourth down and six. Yeah, you'll see Nate Wiggins right here at the in the inside of that tight end spot, he grabs the arm and pulls it back. Never looks back for the ball. I can understand 100% why Tez Walker is saying, why was that not pass interference? He is preventing me from being able to make a play on the ball. And even though we've seen some great one-handed catches over the years, you got to throw that flag in that situation. For the third time, North Carolina will go for it on fourth down. They're one for two. Play clock winding down. May back to throw. Scans the field. Pocket collapses. It's a stop on downs. Clemson gets the sack. Khalil Barnes on a nickel blitz. That's the third sack for the Tigers. And Khalil Barnes is one of their best tackling players on the back end. Here he showed you that he can also go back there and get sacks. But this one was mostly a coverage sack. It had nothing to do with the great pass rush move. Watch as they've got multiple guys in coverage. It looks like the UNC players might be a little fatigued because they're not working as hard as they possibly can to get open. As you see, number five there, J.J. Jones was open on his route, but Drake May did not have time to get over there. Great field position for Clemson as they get the stop on downs. Klubnik off play action. Long throw to the sideline. It's dropped right in. Adam Randall, a contested catch. And Dabo Sweeney all the way downfield. The chip on top of Randall. He loves it. Yeah, and you'll see that they run an underneath route. I've seen this one used in the NFL. It looks like a shallow rub, and he kind of just continues to go up the field with two posts on the other side. Nice job by Kate Klubnik dropping it in there, and Adam Randall showing off some of that speed. Teon Holloway was injured on the play. I'll check that Chapman, so we'll step aside. Shusa, Robert Griffin the third, Chris Button here at Death Valley after the injury timeout. A first down. Klubnik back to throw. The long check down. Stellato. Well, he could, keeps on taking hits like the Energizer Bunny. <laughs> and he keeps on fighting his way through contact that time to pick up eight. I love that reference there by the Energizer Bunny. And what I've seen from Kate Klubnik is he had his Energizer Bunny moment, 
when he threw that ball down the field earlier in the game. A questionable decision, but his ability to move on from those questionable decisions and those mistakes is what's allowed him to get better throughout the year, and now he is simply taking what the defense gives him. Swing pass, Donna Bryant. He's got a first down. Well, to the point, the graphic we put up in the first half, that he played one game in high school decided by single digits. Yeah. All he played in was blowouts. So that was the point that Dabo Sweeney made to us about Kate Klubnik, just getting him to understand it's okay to hit singles. Mm -hmm. Not everything has to be a home run. And if you're used to being able to just hit home runs your whole life as a quarterback, Managing the game has to be a learned skill. It is definitely a learned skill, and he's learned some hard lessons this year, but I hope he'll be a better quarterback in the future because of it. He's going to run it here. Inside the five, down to the four-yard line. An eight-yard run for Kate Klubnik. Power Eccles made the tackle. And when we talked to Dabo, he emphasized again and again and again, we need Kate to use his legs. This isn't a DJ Uwe Ungalale type of situation where DJ was a big physical runner, you know, five yards in a cloud of dust type of guy. Katie can hit some of these big home run runs and they would see on third and 10, he could run for eight and he wouldn't do it. He tried to throw a ball in a tight coverage. Well, today you're seeing him use his legs effectively. Mafa spins and the heels rally and drive him down at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of a yard. Kamen Rucker finished him off. And now a big play coming here. Third down inside the five. Third and one here inside the five. Can get the first down without scoring a touchdown. Certainly looking towards them running the football for sure. There's the quarterback sneak. They have Mafa lined up for the push from behind for Klubnik, and where will they mark it? Wow. This is close. I think he's short. He needed to get to about the two-yard line, and he is barely inside the three, it seems. Yeah, it appears that they did not push his touch enough to help him get that first down. You would think with a full yard to go, you wouldn't run that. But when they ran the touch push play earlier in this game, they ended up getting what felt like three yards. So they felt confident with it. Now they got themselves in another fourth and one situation. You would think they would just kind of go back to the same play. Well, the play clock's winding down to the point Davo Sweeney has to call timeout. So a fourth down decision. What play will they call? Assuming they're going to go for it when we come back. Field. RG3, what are they dialing up on fourth down? Yeah, seems like they're going to hand it to Phil Moffa and allow him to go barrel full for a first down. They're going to go Wildcat and snap it directly to Moffa. He tries the right-hand side. He finds Painter. That's a Clemson touchdown. Nice job right there. Phil Moffa getting a little creative with the play call. Motioning K. Klubnik out and allowing Phil Moffa to do what he does best. The stop on fourth down as well. Creates the short field again for Clemson. And they take advantage. And they now have a two touchdown lead. So yeah, you see this vacant spot right here? Well, that's what Kate Klumnik was. They ran him out, and then they allowed Phil Moffitt to get downhill and break it outside. When you get this man in a one-on-one -on -one situation, there is not a player in the country that wants to tackle. And right there, he breaks a tackle on Power Eccles, right at the line of scrimmage, going for the legs, and he said, young man, I run through the arm tackles. Let's get to business. Three high school seasons. Phil Moffa gained about 2,500 yards, and he became the first commit of the first recruiting class after COVID for Demo Sweeney. And now he is part, as you said, of that yin and yang of he's the 230 pound running back, kind of the hammer looking for a nail, the perfect complement to Will Shipley. 
who is much more of the shifty, make you miss in space type back. And they're a terrific one too much. 100%, Bob. Let's head down to Chris. Maffa's recruitment to Clemson is interesting because he played middle school ball from third grade to seventh grade for Coach Mickey Kahn. And then after his seventh grade year, Coach Kahn came here to Clemson. He's currently the safeties coach, co-defensive coordinator. And at that point, Maffa said, God, I really want to go to Clemson. He wrote it down in his eighth grade memory book. So it's crazy to look back, all connecting the dots, that it started that early. And because of the connection to Coach Kahn, I was able to be here in Death Valley. And his touchdown makes it 21-7, Clemson. And off to Hampton to get this drive started for North Carolina. And let's see if they have an answer. As that off-balance throw and a terrific one at that, it was for Drake May for the touchdown in the first half to J.J. Jones. That's the only score for North Carolina, but two Hampton fumbles down near the end zone have hurt them. Over the middle, Taz Walker boxes out the defender and is able to make the catch out to the 45-yard line in front of Nate Wiggins. Yes, and this is why NFL recruiters, or you want to call them scouts, love Drake May. He works across the formation and throws the ball right on his receiver. Ooh. There goes Hampton. Stays on his feet. Amaria Hampton breaks another tackle. Sure, he held on to the ball on that one. High and tight all the way through. You see the cross sip insert from Copenhaver. Once again, great run play that they have. And then it's Omarion Hampton seeing two, splitting two, and then getting his legs up there on the sideline to ensure that he was not taken down. Keeps his feet in bounds. Big old strong legs. Hampton with a very nice job of re making up for some of the mistakes that he made earlier in the game. He averages about 124 yards per game on the ground, number two in FBS, and now he's up to 161 yards in this afternoon's game. 11 and a half yards per carry for Amari and Hampton. And that touchdown, and the point after, makes it a seven-point game again. So what you're going to see is Copenhagen's going to come around and insert here in the middle. And what you're, these guys are all working to get that block to allow a massive lane to be developed right here in the middle of the field for Omarion Hampton. So as he takes this and bounces it outside, it's just a nice job of him having great ball security, making sure he gets through that, and then not allowing Jeremiah Trotter Jr.'s last-ditch effort there at the end to take out his legs, make him go out of bounds. You know this guy is aware of the ball security issues he's had today, so watch him even there at the end. Put two hands on the ball. Now we got ourselves a football game once again. He was the first player in North Carolina to have five straight 100 yard games since Gio Bernard back in 2011. Now he's the first UNC player to crack 100 yards since 1970 in six consecutive games. Man. The only running back in America with over 1,200 yards rushing and 13 or more yards on 13 or more touchdowns as well. He has had as good a season as any running back has in the country. And that's why they trust and believe in him so much. And you said 1970, Bob. Were you a college freshman at that time? I was on the way. <laughs> I had yet to greet the world, but thanks for that. <laughs> Bob Wachusen, an extraordinarily annoying Robert Griffin III, <laughs> and Chris Button. As we take a look at the season comparison, what Omarion Hampton has done, if you go all the way back to Don McCauley in 1970, and he's closing in on McCauley's numbers. At this rate, put him through the bowl game, he's going to get up to 1,700 yards. Hey, who was Don McCauley running against? My God, how many yards did he have? <laughs> Look at Will Shipley come through on this inside zone and watch him put a move on number 27 right there. Ah! Number 20 can't stop him either. Will Shipley 
running, as we say, pissed off. <laughs> that is what running pissed off looks like, guys. Will Shipley and Phil Mappa are essentially fighting for carries, and they're both showing you why together they're so much better than they are apart. Yin and yang, baby. Play action. Bloodman. And this one lofted down to about the 13-yard line for Tyler Brown. And you see it, Cade, put a little bit more air on some of these throws deep down the field, trying to give his receivers opportunities. I like the aggression, but at the same time, you have to know when to call uncle. And if the defense has that deep ball covered, bring it down to your check down. Something that he's continuing to work on. He has an aggressive mindset, and now he's just continuing to mold himself into be that quarterback that makes the right decision every single time. He was the Gatorade player of the year in Texas back in high school. He'll give to Mappa here. And he'll pick up four. That'll bring up third down and six at the 40-yard line of North Carolina. And you bring up Cade being the Gatorade player of the year. And I had an opportunity to, to coach Cade in high school. He came to my quarterback camp at Baylor University, quarterback academy. And for some reason, I just gravitated towards him. He's a freshman in high school, didn't know that he was going to be the player that he has become today. But after the camp, I absolutely knew this guy was going to be special. Slant. It looks like short of the first down to Tyler Brown. So now, fourth down and one. And Clemson will go for it. Yeah, Cade, you know, obviously wanted to have a little bit better throw there, but it's fourth and one. We've seen these decisions, I feel like, more in this game than we have all season, Bob. And both coaches have decided to continue to stay aggressive. Plenty of time on the play clock to get lined up. It's a 12. Brown in motion. Might be a free play. It's a flag down. Back shoulder throw. That's out of bounds. But a flag was thrown on the far side of the field as it looked as if the hard count may have gotten North Carolina to jump. Offside. Defense. Number 25. Out here is also the first down. So Cayman Rucker was in the neutral zone. Fourth and one, watch the hard count. Right here, Cayman Rucker, so dialed in, trying to get after the quarterback or stop the run. <laughs> oh, man. He's trying to show that an offensive lineman move, but it's clear that he was the one that moved on that play. Nice job by the center. Snapping the ball, Will Putnam giving them an opportunity to get that free play. The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. The previous play is under further review. So they're going to see, it was a free play, if the lob down the sideline may actually be a completed pass. Certainly looked like the club pass carried out of bounds, but did Stilato get a foot down? We're going to see right here. Yes, he did. Let's, uh, let's watch another look here. You're going to see ball comes in, inside foot. That looks like a catch, Bob. we got to get it slowed down just a little bit more to see. Right here, it's that foot right there. Doesn't look to be on the line. I think his left foot is coming up off the field once he has complete possession of the ball. Really hard to see if he still has a toe down. Yeah, it's, a, he got it's, it's complete possession of ball, Complete toe. possession of the ball. It's that toe right there. Right. To me, that's a catch. It's a matter of is that toe on the line, as you see, we zoom in. Everything looks better when you zoom in sometimes. <laughs> and that looks to me like he has possession. Ball, foot doesn't look like it's on the line. So Troy Stilato wore his stilettos tonight. Got them <laughs> tiptoeing on the sideline. I love it. Well, this is as bang bang as it gets. He is gathering the ball. And he may still barely have a toe down in the field of play as he makes the catch again. The precedent set on the field is important as well. Right. I'll tell you what, if he comes away with the catch, that'll be one of the more impressive plays we've seen as far as sideline awareness. But 
Well, either way, it's a first down. And I can understand why they say ruling on the field stands because to say that he had complete control of the ball before his foot came up off the ground after they ruled it incomplete on the field all it did was take 11 yards of field position away from Clemson. They still have a first down at the North Carolina 30 yard line. Yeah and to your point saying that it stands just pretty much showing you that whatever they ruled on the field they didn't have enough evidence to overturn it and they moved on to the next play. Heels having a tough time getting lined up. Clemson on a keeper with a stiff arm. Being stretched out and brought down. Great pursuit as Cedric Gray and Stick Lane were out there to combine on the tackle for loss. Yeah, and, and Cade makes the right read here, gets outside. It's just when you're a wide receiver on the outside, you see both Tyler Brown and Adam Randall throw their hands up. If you're a wide out, you got to protect your quarterback blocking on the perimeter. Run your feet. Don't allow those DBs to make him have to turn it back in. And that's why he gets one of those unnecessary hits that you hate to see if you're Dabo Sweeney or Garrett Riley on the quarterback. Well, Nick again on the run. Flags everywhere. Zips one up the sideline, but this will most likely be holding. Called against Clemson. Let's see. A couple of flags are down. Looks like Cade might have got hit a little late. If Javari Ritzy roughed the passer, that's going to negate the holding penalty. So it looks like we've got two different penalty flags thrown here for two different fouls. There are fouls by both teams on the play. Holding, offense, number 77. Personal foul, post card tackle. Defense, number five. The foul's offset. We play secondary. So it'll be second down and 13 all over again with three and a half minutes to go in the quarter. So you see the holding here. Big fella. Mitchell Mays trying to protect his quarterback. I'm not going to lie, guys. Oftentimes I tell my offensive lineman, thank you. Appreciate you protecting me there. And then right here, there's the horse collar at the very end on K. Klubnik. Offsetting, so we do it again. Delayed handoff to Shiplett. Shipley, Mopup, and Klubnik have done the job on the ground. 
Yes, they certainly have. We talked about Cade having to use his legs a little bit more, but it was all about the yin and yang. Will Shipley, Phil Maffa, both the same amount of carries, pretty much 14 to 13. You see the averages in their running, and they are both playing their role to the T. It's allowed them to build this lead and give their defense an opportunity to pin their ears back because you know North Carolina is going to try to throw the ball to get back in it. Play action for May. He wants to take a shot for Walker. Bobbled. Incomplete. Walker had a chance at it. Andrew Makuba had a chance at it. And eventually, it's an incomplete pass. And this is a beautiful throw from Drake May. Tess Walker's got to make this play. Kind of hits him off the face mask. And it's just the way the ball bounces. It looked like Makuba might have a chance to intercept that one. And as I talked about, Drake May, he can throw the deep ball really well. He's been very creative today in his playmaking ability. Uh-oh. It looks like 12 men on the field here for North Carolina. They were trying to run a player off late after they were already coming to the line in formation. Substitution infraction, offense. One of the 11 players in formation. Uh, second down. So a drop by Walker, because that was about as well as May could throw the ball right into his hands, followed by a five-yard penalty. And instead of a chunk play, you're looking at second and 15. Exactly. And when you look at how their yardage over the course of the season and their points, both extremely down today. 360 is not too bad through three quarters, but they're not putting up the same amount of points that we're used to seeing from the number one offense in the ACC. Drake May will run. Stays on his feet. All the way out to midfield before Clemson finally gets him down. A 30-yard run for Drake May. Eventually, it was Jeremiah Trotter to make the stop. Yeah, and this one right here looks like a designated quarterback draw. He's telling them all to get off of him. And when you see Drake May play big plays like this, only one thing comes to mind. That boy good. Made a throw on first down. Sings one to the sideline, a 50-50 ball, and that's incomplete. Khalil Barnes in front of J.J. Jones. Once again, Khalil Barnes, one of their better tacklers on the back end, but watch how this man covers. He understands timing and space. He goes to undercut the route, and you see him right there. He's not just playing defense, people. He's playing to take the ball away. He sees the ball, he tries to attack the ball and catch it. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to for the Clemson fans, but Drake May is going to continue to try to put the team on his back here late in the third quarter. Amarion Hampton with a blitz coming. Boy, he's tough to bring down. Three yards through all kinds of contact. Trotter, Makuba combine on the stop, third down and seven. And what was most impressive about that run from Amarion Hampton is that his big offensive lineman, Diego Pounds, pulled from the other side of the formation and literally did not block anybody. And Omarion Hampton was still able to turn a negative play into somewhat of a positive. Now here on third and seven, look for them once again to try to get Taz Walker involved. False start. It's going to be third down and 12. The crowd noise seemed to throw the North Carolina offense off. False start. Offense. Everyone but the center. Five more penalty. Third down. Ball start on everyone but the center. Which I guess means it's the center's fault for not snapping the ball. Probably, and they were just getting ready to throw a nice little reverse to Taz Walker like we talked about before the play. Who is the one they want to get involved in these situations? Now in third and 12, they're certainly going to try to work their big fella on the inside. Bryson Nesbitt, he's in the slot to the top of the screen right here. Another flag. Another false start. We talked about it in the open, Bob. This is one of the greatest home field advantages in all of college football, and they are making their presence felt right here on this drive. Number 75, Spencer Rowland. Got rolling a little bit too early on that play. Now that's a Death Valley 10 yards right there. May, well short of even the 50-yard line on a little down and out. It'll be fourth and 13, and it's probably too much to ask for for Mac Brown. Looks like.
he this time will send the punt group out. Still a lot of time left. We're not even through the third quarter with a two-possession game. Exactly. Don't compound a bad situation and make it a worse situation. Fourth and 13, punt it away. Trust your defense to try to be able to stop this Clemson running game and get it back to your offense with a chance to win. More than enough time left in this game. No need to panic. Tom McGinnis, the Aussie rules punter. End over end kick, half green, fair catch. Well done by McGinnis, perfect touch down to the eight yard line. We go down to Chris. Bob, you guys said it, it is loud down here, which is probably why they've had the false starts, but Mac Brown probably knows Dabo Sweeney's record in this, in this place more than Dabo does, because he said it to us several times, he told me before the game, and he told his team yesterday, 96 and nine under Dabo Sweeney inside Death Valley. And in the college football playoff er era, going back to 2014, they are 65 and three. Yeah. So he won, he lost more games his first few years than he has since 2014. Hoffa gets the drive started with a push and grinds out about four yards to the 12-yard line and that should take us just about to the end of the third quarter looks like the game clock is about a second behind the play clock so Clemson will have to snap it one more time before the end of the quarter and I would say that you know Clemson's now gonna lean on the running game and try to shorten the game but that's what they've been doing the whole game they've been giving the ball to Will Shipley giving the ball to Phil Moffa allowing Kate Clubman to rush the ball and be an impact in the running game in a much bigger way so this will be nothing different for them on the offensive side of the ball Clubman long one down the sideline broken up Randall the intended receiver that looked like great coverage from Marcus Allen oh yes it was great coverage you see they double move him Guess what? Marcus Allen got hit with a touchdown on a double move last week. This week he's saying, oh, no, no, no. I watched film two people. I figured it out. He was able to recover there and prevent a big play from happening. And Cedric Gray, who is really the heart and soul of this UNC defense, is down. North Carolina was the only power five offer for Cedric Gray. He was a wide receiver and a safety in high school, but they believed in him as a linebacker. And he is now top 10 all time in North Carolina history in tackles. He has had a tremendous career for the heels. He's got five tackles tonight. And there is Mac Brown out as part of the group to check on a senior linebacker. Yeah, and you'll see Cedric Gray right here, middle of your screen, number 33, one of the best backers in the ACC. Going up, fill the gap. Collisions with the offensive lineman there. Oh, and then gets a little pancake action at the end, but it's clearly something to do with the hand underneath the helmet. Kind of affected him in a big way. It's a violent game out there. Hopefully he's okay and get back out there because you know North Carolina if they're going to make a run they're going to need guys like him out on the football field on defense. So now a big play for the North Carolina defense without Gray on the field. Final play of the third quarter most likely. And there's Shipley. Hunting a first down and he's got it and then so. Get the ball to great players in space. Good things happen. And Will Shipley ends the third quarter with a Thurston at Miami. Previously undefeated, now 124 and 1. When they have a 10 plus point lead entering the fourth quarter, back to the ground. Mafa. Very close to a first down. And moments ago, Chris Button spoke with Davos Whitney. Coach, what have you thought about the way that both your backs have performed and fed off of each other so far? Well, I like how they've responded. You know, obviously, Shipley with a really costly turnover but man he's a he's a you just keep giving it to him you know he, he, he's 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 really sparked us with some big plays and then Mafa obviously on the fourth and one huge huge finish I'm proud of him I mean, guys are doing a nice job so we just got to keep the rhythm disappointed in the 
missed tackles and, and uh, the big play runs. We got to we got to clean that up because we got a long way to go. This bunch is explosive and they can score. So if we can if we can stop this run, hopefully we can uh, get after the quarterback. Thank you, coach. Okay. No, I mean Dabo's 100% right on defense. They certainly got a tackle, but. They knew coming into this game that North Carolina used to is used to fizzling in the fourth quarter when it comes to defense. They give up more rushing yards. They give up more punts, uh, points because they're tiring down because they don't rotate a ton. So this is perfectly set up for them to run the air out of the football to close this game. Look out for the sideline and a broken tackle. Brings to it. Across the 50-yard line into UNC territory with a first down he picks up 15 and as unbeatable with a double digit lead in the fourth quarter as Clemson has been it's been tough sledding this year in the fourth quarter for North Carolina in terms of yards and score yeah it's the reason that their game last week against Duke went into double overtime it's because they weren't able to stop anybody on defense and certainly Duke with the backup quarterback out there now they're having to face this running attack with Kate Club Say, man, I wish he threw this about seven yards further so it was a touchdown. But for Will Shipley, a running back, to have these type of ball skills that deep down the field he can stop and pop with the best of them is incredible. Right back to Shipley to the five yard line. It'll be second down and goal. What I love most about what Garrett Riley just did there is he trusted Kate Klubnik in a moment in the game where a bad play a turnover can completely change the tide and change the momentum and they're trusting this young man to go out there and make plays throwing the ball deep down the field to one of their best players in Will Shipley phenomenal job by them building his confidence I think that touchdown run at the end that the big right before halftime also helped him in this moment in this atmosphere against a ranked opponent. Play action. Flag down. And Klubnik throws it away. Leo Shiv, offense. Two men moving at the snap. Five yard penalty. Second down. Well, clearly you can't have two or three guys moving at the snap of the ball. And uh, apparently our head ref there also didn't know what those numbers were for who was moving. Or maybe it was just too many guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, instead, it's second down and goal back to the 10. Up the middle with Mafa. To the six yard line, and RG3, you can make an argument that a field goal here is almost as good as a touchdown. You start to look at the clock winding down. A field goal here makes it a three score game, and you'd be down to about 11 minutes to go. Obviously, you'd rather have the touchdown, but putting your North Carolina in a three score hole when they only have two scores for the game to this point, you probably want to protect the football here. 100%, and if I'm Garrett Brother, that's exactly what I was telling Clay Kate Clubman in these situations. Hey, don't be afraid to take the layup. Throw the check down, hand the ball off if it's not there. Let's take the points and let's move on in this game and trust that our defense is going to continue to shut down North Carolina's offense. Klubnik on the run, looking for his second rushing touchdown of the game, and he protects the ball and goes out of bounds at about the five yard line. So here comes the field goal group for the first time as Jonathan Whites, a former walk on. Who the well publicized story where they were struggling from a place kicking standpoint. And he was at Charleston just taking online classes as he had left Clemson and retired from football. Dabo Sweeney found out he had a year of eligibility left. He said, No, no, no. Forget that apartment in New York City. Forget your internship. Get out of Charleston. Come back here and kick for us. And he has since then. This one from 21. And he's got it. And there is the three score lead with ten and a half to go. Six 
in pass defense. This year they are tied seventh in America, and they have been really good again tonight as we go back to Matt Barrett. Gentlemen, you may have heard reports coming out this week about a potential change at UCLA. Well, I doubt after this score of an absolute beatdown against USC, those reports may change. 38-13 Bruins over the Trojans. And don't forget the big one tonight of the Pac-12, ABC, Washington, Jalen McMillan on the road in a cold Oregon State. That'll be a good one, as we will see Michael Penix tonight continue his Heisman pursuit. Drake May, incomplete. Looking for Tess Walker. Yeah, I mean, really the, the name of the game so far has been this Clemson defense. Not only have they been pressuring Drake May all day, in the coverage side of things, they've been making sure that his receivers don't have a lot of space. They've been harassing him. You see a lot of coverage sacks happening, and it's mostly because of what this man on the screen, Wes Goodwin, has been able to orchestrate, getting his guys in the right positions to make plays. They have gotten the better of Drake May, and, they're, and Drake May and UNC's off. Another false start. False start. Offense, number 61. Five second down. That's Diego Pounds that moved early. And tonight, we mentioned it, the big Pac-12 primetime showdown. Michael Penix Jr. at number five, Washington, will take on number 11, Oregon State. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ABC and the ESPN app. A lot of Heisman implications in that game for Michael Penix Jr. for sure. Drake Mack, room to run. He's got a first down. Picks up 17. And this is what happens when you constantly try to quarterback spy a guy like Drake Bay who can make plays with his feet. He understands this, and the passing game hasn't really been there, but I can still make a huge impact on this game, keep my team on the field by rushing for as many yards as I can. This is going to get them 15 more yards 100%. as he was clearly pulled down by the face mask by Devontae Capehart. So after a 17 yard scramble by Bay, 15 more via the penalty, and North Carolina's across the 50 yard line. Oh man, that's a very vicious, very vicious face mask right there. DeMonte Capehart at 6'5, 320 pounds has to be saying, Good God, come on, Drake, man, stop running around so much. It's not that easy when you got to carry around all this weight, but he certainly can't get his hands on his face. Marion Hampton tries to turn the corner. And fights his way to about the 42, maybe the 41 yard line. Brought down inbounds. And again, down by three scores coming up on nine and a half minutes to go. We have seen North Carolina play up tempo much of today's game, but now they really have to get set and snap it quickly, although this will buy them some time as Xavier Thomas is down on one knee for Clemson. So we have an injury timeout with Xavier Thomas being checked out by the training staff. Let me show you what goes on behind the ACC soccer championship this year. Now they're trying to Mount a comeback here on the football field, down 31 to 14. After the injury timeout, second down and three, Drake May. Finds a crosser, J.J. Jones has a first down to the Tigers' 31-yard line. You know, we've seen J.J. Jones getting a lot of action here on offense, and he was fourth in the ACC in yards per catch coming into this game, and he's had some big plays already. May shovel pass behind McCollum, who scoots to the sideline, and he's inside the 15-yard line, all the way down to about the 12. You know, I said it before, Drake made the position in the pocket, but he's also a position outside the pocket. Look at this right here. Extended bubble screen there to Nate McCollum. He finds a way to get it to him, pitching it to him with his left hand. Unbelievable. Up the middle goes Hampton. Inside the 10-yard line. Another tackle for Trotter. I gotta say, when Drake May makes some of these spectacular 
unorthodox plays. The first name that comes to mind, of course, for everybody is a guy like Patrick Mahomes, but he truly is a fun guy to watch play the game, and he's not great. They've got eight minutes left, and a touchdown here can still give them an opportunity to, to make a nice comeback if their defense can find a way to stop Clemson's offense. May, again, a crosser. Inside the five, down to the four-yard line goes Copenhaver. It'll be third down and about two from the four. Wayne Wood has made the stop. The clock continues to wind down. Inside of eight minutes to go. Hampton, very close to a first down. I think he's short. Looks like it's going to be fourth down in a spot where North Carolina obviously has to go for it. Seven and a half minutes to go, down by three scores. Yeah, and once again, you saw R.J. Mickens coming off the edge there, going in at the legs of Amarion Hampton, forcing him to not be able to carry his legs with him to push forward and get that first down. But here, fourth and one, you got to go for it. Hand this football off and allow your big back to get the first down for you. A lot of time coming off the clock. Hampton, second effort at the goal line. He's in for a touchdown. Peter Woods, the true freshman, missed a tackle near the line of scrimmage. As is often the case, Amari and Hampton runs through contact. He's got the touchdown, and now we've got a two-possession game again. And you see it right there, number 11, Peter Woods goes high. Annihilates the offensive lineman in front of him, but that's what makes Omarion Hampton such a special back. Even when the offensive line isn't right, he can make them right, break tackles in the backfield, and score a touchdown. 178 yards on the night. This man is truly special. Uh, North Carolina is going to line up here to go for two. I'm not 100% sure that the math makes sense as they are trying to take an 11 point game and cut it down to nine. And this play blown dead. And North Carolina had to spend a timeout. Now the heels with seven minutes to go, still down by two scores. Not a timeout you want to use here. Well, let's head down to Chris Buck. Yeah, Mac Brown very heavily involved in analytics when it comes to these decisions. And there was a guy standing about two feet from him. He's got a binder, and it's different every week. There's, there's red and green and yellow. I can look on the inside of it. Read to him, and that's what told him to go for this. Well, the analytics might say that if you, in a situation where there's two touchdowns needed, going for two here would put you in a spot where you could win the game by scoring 10 more points. If you fail here, you're still only down by two scores, and another two-point conversion st could still in the field goal get you into a tie. I mean, a lot has to happen for North Carolina to get there, but yeah. going for the two-point conversion on the first of the two touchdowns that you need, and it's broken up. So now they're down by 11 with 7.03 to go as Makuba gets the pass to fixed. So here you're going to see Omarion Hampton run through the arm tackles of Peter Woods, the big 300-pounder, and power himself into the end zone. And then Clemson's defense comes up big on the two-point conversion and shuts it down. A hands team is on the field preparing for a potential onside kick for Clemson. But 7.03 to go. You'd have to think Carolina will kick the ball deep here, and they will. And Mafa will let it float over his head to the back of the end zone for a touchback back to Matt. Guys, we have a stunner at Jordan-Hare Stadium. New Mexico State, 27-and-a-half-point underdogs, go into Auburn and win 31-10. Largest Auburn upset in the last 45 years. Coming up tonight, ESPN, Cody Schrader in a high-flying Missouri offense gets set to host Florida. That coming up in just under a half hour here on ESPN. I'm wondering the scene at Tuber's corner right now. 
and not a happy bunch of Tiger fans down there. Good. So now North Carolina's defense has to get a stop. And they drive Mamba back on first down after a gain of only a couple. With under seven minutes to go, you start to count possessions in time. And they almost need a three and out to have a realistic chance to get the ball back twice with, say, in the neighborhood of 5.15 to go. 100%. And, and Mac Brown actually challenged his team this week. He told them, hey, guys, I want you to stand up if Clemson did not recruit you. And dang near the whole room stood up. So this is their opportunity to come out here and show Clemson why they should have recruited them in this moment when you're down by 11 in the fourth quarter with six minutes left. Your defense has to step up and make a stop. Shipley gets a try. Gets to the edge, spins, and stays inbounds at the 32-yard line, about three yards shy of a first down. Power Eccles made the tackle. So a huge third down here. What almost feels like a must stop for the Hughes. Must stop might be an understatement. And Clemson's certainly going to take their dear sweet time, try to milk the clock as much as they possibly can. So if you're the big fellas up front, you see linebacker Cedric Gray back in the game. You got to play your best play right here on third and fourth. Slow mesh handoff to Mappa, and there is the stop. So again, Clemson can take another 40 seconds or so off the clock. But fourth down and three. North Carolina only has two timeouts left because they had to call one before the two-point conversion try. So they're not going to spend one here. But their defense did exactly what their defense had to do. They get the three and out. Now their offense about to get the ball back in a two-possession game. And you knew coming into this possession, Clemson was going to lean on what had gotten them there, the running game. So the big fellas up front had to be stout for a team in North Carolina that hasn't been great in fourth quarter stopping the run. They did it there to give themselves a chance. Elijah Hussey out of the game, so McCollum with a fair catch at his own 30-yard line. Only a 38-yard punt with 4.44 to go. Carolina, after they get the three and out, and potentially the first pick in the draft, that quarterback, that always gives you hope. Drake May back to work. He goes down with a flag down as well. Couple of flags thrown. Personal foul. Face mask. Offense. Number 75. Half the distance of the goal. First down. Face mask there on Spencer Rollin. You're going to see it right there on Xavier Thomas. He's pulling his face mask down. And it was the pressure from Xavier Thomas that allowed Tyler Davis there to get that sack on Drake May. You wonder if Drake May has any magic in him to try to pull off this comeback. But if it's going to be Drake May magic, his offensive line has to protect him. Now, wisely, Dabo Sweeney declined the penalty and took the down. Knocked down by Trotter. So now it's third down and 15. Rather than taking half the distance to the goal, but giving Carolina the down back, they got a sack. So why not take the down and the five-yard loss? That's what Dabo Sweeney did. And now imagine you got to complete a third down and 15 in Death Valley with this crowd coming into and coming alive. Listen to this atmosphere and understand how much pressure it is putting on the quarterback, Drake May. Well, they've got two downs to get it. Flags down, though. This will be another false start. Now it'll be third down and 20. False start. Offense. Entire line. I guess you know what's saying. Crowd noise, false start, get the entire offensive line. Moves early. Exactly, and you hear that dong in the, in the background. These fans are getting pumped up. If you're UNC 30 and 20, you got to get at least half 10 yards here. It's going down territory. Drake made the play's not there. Get out the pocket. 
make it use your legs. That's what you've had a lot of success with here in the second half. Track man directing traffic across his body. Tipped back and complete. And now it's fourth down and 20. And North Carolina down by two scores with 424 to go. You'd think they have to go for this. Tess Walker, the intended receiver. And Wiggins was all over. Yeah, I told you, four down territory. You wanted to at least get yourself into a fourth, third, and man, a fourth and manageable there. That didn't happen. Tess Walker tried to get him to go where he was wanting him to go towards the sideline, end up throwing it in the middle of his body. Now, I'd like to see them get the running back out of the backfield and run five verticals to give Drake May some type of seam against this soft coverage. May, he's going to put one up for grabs, almost a hail Mary down the sideline. That just goes out of bounds. So Clemson takes over on downs with 4.17 to go. And you see the look of disappointment on Drake May's face. He knows in that situation, fourth and 20, I got to give my guy an opportunity. But right here, he throws it completely out of bounds, trying to throw it to Tez Walker. He is one of the best players in the country. But in that moment, even in an impossible down the distance of fourth and 20, he's got to keep that one in bounds. Shipley dives for a yard. Let's go down to Chris. Bob, this is a Clemson team that after their loss to NC State, all the players got together, had a players-only meeting, and the purpose of it was for people to stand up and explain their why. Why do you play football? Who do you play football for? And it wasn't just for each individual. It was for them to hear their teammates so that when you're lined up and you're going through something and it's been tough and they've lost a couple games in a row, they can sit there, the guy at the left, the guy at the right of them, and be like, I know why you play football. I know who you play football for since then guys like Tyler Davis told me completely different team chemistry playing for each other and the 15 years under Dabo Sweeney they have set an incredible standard the only team in America that's won more games is Alabama the only team that's been to the college football playoff more often is Alabama the only team that's won more national championships is Alabama they are right there in this era of dominance under Dabo Sweeney as one of now the true blue blood programs in college football. So when you have a four loss season, and that's cataclysmic at Clemson, but who would you rather trust to get this program back to where they've been than the guy that got them there in the first place, and that's Dabo Sweeney. Yeah, and you talk about all that dominance, but when we talked to Dabo this week, he wasn't focused on that. He said going through the hardship that they had to this year has made them closer. He's had to coach in ways that he hasn't had to coach since when he first got the job in the first two seasons. So he actually appreciates some of the turmoil and the controversy that they've had to go through this year, and he believes even more in his guys and his his coaches as a byproduct of it. A bootleg for Klopnik, and he'll be dragged down well behind the line of scrimmage all the way back to the 26-yard line. The only hope really here for North Carolina is to hold to a field goal, and then they would need a miracle, though they would still only be down by two scores. But Amari Gaynor did not fall for the bootleg fake. No, he did not. But I think there's also something to say here about Cade Klubnik and Garrett Riley together and their development throughout this season. Garrett was brought in here to, to put together that high-flying offense that we saw from TCU last year that led them all the way to the college football playoff. But it hasn't been the reality for them as much this year. Their offense hasn't quite been as explosive as everyone anticipated that it would be. Shipley. And now I think a timeout will be called by Mac Brown with 2.47 to go. He's got two left, so he'll spend one here. And the Save some time for his offense, and let's see, assuming a field goal try here for Clemson. And the reason I say that about Garrett Riley and Kate Klubnik is because today they've come out and they've shown that maturation. They have been explosive. Cade has used his legs and, and used the phrase that Dabo said, BYOG, bring your own guts. These 
these guys were gutty today. They gutted out this season at six and four, moving to seven and four. But when you look at their offense last year compared to this year, there are some out there that say, hey, why would you make the switch? Well, when your top two receivers are out, Cole Turner and Antonio Williams, and you've had a bunch of injuries along the offensive line with Marcus Tate uh, and their starting right guard as well being out, it's going to take guys like Garrett Riley and Kate Public learning from their mistakes and continuing to push forward throughout the rest of the season. They have done that. And today, I think they showed you that Clemson isn't going anywhere for a long time. No good on the field goal attempt. As White misses it wide right. So that buys a little bit of field position for North Carolina. And keeps this an 11 point game with 241 to go. Yeah, you see White tries to line it up. Oh, and just missed it outside. Marie Tope, right back into UNC. They got to score fast. We know that based off the time on the clock and the amount of timeouts that they do have. But you never say never in the game of college football. Well, at least keeps the game alive. As now they're in a position where any points would make it a one possession game and then bring the outside kick into play. They set to go. To the sideline! Is it picked? Juggling interception is made by Nate Wiggins. He jumps the rail and picks up Drake May. That should be the final man for Clemson. Oh my goodness. Nate Wiggins with the big time play on a quarterback that we know is going to be drafted in the first couple picks. Not only does he see it and recognize it, he closes on it and shows off the ball skills, catches it the second time, gets a foot in. We'll see if he got it all the way in there on the sideline, but holy moly stone shot. Nate Wiggins just made himself a lot of money because I know there's a lot of NFL scouts here watching him play because most of them were here for Drake May, but he sold the show. That's an amazing athletic interception for the junior Nate Wiggins who Mel Kuyper has as a first-round draft choice. And you see him right there on the sideline making it rain on him. He understands how big of a play that was and how he's shown himself to be a lockdown corner here today. They're going to go to replay just to make sure, but he took three steps while he was gathering control of that football. And I think all three were inbounds. And it'll just be that second one to see if the inside of his foot may or may not have been on the out-of-bounds line, and we're going to show it to you right here. This first step is in, but he's juggling the ball, so he doesn't have control. Now he does, and it's about that step right there. Is that inbounds, or is it a little bit out-of-bounds? It looked like the heel. It depends if the heel is down or not. What do you think, Bob? I think he's inbounds. And if not, I, I don't know. Ooh how you would say that is indisputable and then the last foot definitely touches it back. So what you're going to see is on that step and that's not going to show you from across the field. The angle we had before was probably the best one and I want you to watch the debris that that comes up from his foot. If you see a little bit of white there's a good chance the refs might see that and think that it's indisputable evidence that he was out of bounds but the ruling on the field is what's going to trump anything here. It has to be completely without a shadow of a doubt that he stepped out of bounds for them to overturn this. The ruling on the field and interception. And I'm not sure from any of the replays that we've seen how you would say it's indisputable that he was out of bounds and you're going to overturn it. I know when I've been a quarterback in these situations, I'd be praying to Jesus. Lord have mercy, please allow the ref to see that he stepped out of bounds so we can get another opportunity to go out there and try to make a play and make a comeback. Sometimes those prayers work, sometimes they don't. But our ref is in that headset for a mighty long time. So let's see what they come up with. And to me, if it takes this long and this many looks and you still don't come to a decision, then by definition, you're saying it's not indisputable, and you stay with the call on the field. That's a further review. The ruler of the field stands. First down, Clemson. Clemson. 
So with that, Nate Wiggins has one of the biggest plays in the game. Two great players going at each other all day. Nate Wiggins having to cover. Tez Walker, both of those guys are Sunday guys. They will be playing in the NFL. And Drake May, look at what he started in the first quarter, 120 yards and a touchdown since 11 for 27 for 89 yards and a pick. It's clear it was good on good today, but Clemson just happened to be that much better. Hoppa up the middle. Flags throw. North Carolina has one timeout left. And if they call it, it could extend the game. Hands to the face. Defense, number three. 15 yard penalty. I'm sorry, half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. But if Mac Brown decides not to use that final timeout, then it's just about victory formation at this point for Clemson. Just how much of an impressive game has this been for Cade Klubnik? Minimized his mistakes and made plays all throughout the game. And again, if North Carolina does not call their final timeout at this point, you could just about take a knee. If you're Clemson and Kate Klubnik, the last time North Carolina saw Klubnik was in the ACC championship game last season. He had a terrific performance, was named the game MVP. And he's been very efficient and basically mistake free again today. Exactly. And it's Cade's been giving North Carolina that fade the last two times he's played him. This is a, a young man who I personally believe is going to have Clemson in the national championship conversation come next year and certainly before he leaves here if he continues to mature in the way that he showed tonight. Papa down to the five yard line. And of course Clemson still has the rivalry game left to play with South Carolina and Dabo Swinney believes you win that one and you end the game the season on a four game win streak two of those wins over ranked opponents in Notre Dame and today against North Carolina a team that is not going to say goodbye to too many players as they will have a great roster coming back next year. Yeah, they will. And Dabo's been on record saying, don't believe the lie. And there's been a lot of people lying that Clemson will not be able to maintain in the way that they built their program and because of this down year. I think he's showing that he can still coach a little bit. He's got some players on this team that are special. False start. Offense number nine. Five yard penalty. Third down. Well, Matt Brown seems to have sent the signal. He is not spending his final time out. So I'm not sure why Clemson is even running plays anymore. And Kate Klubnik takes the snap and takes a knee here. And Mac Brown doesn't spend a timeout. Down by a couple of scores with 30 something seconds to go. The game would be over. They'll run it with Mafa. 30 seconds remaining. And it looks like Mac and North Carolina will wave the white flag. You know, Dabo Sweeney wore the black Air Force Ones yesterday for his team because they knew they were coming here to be the biggest and the baddest with their sixth straight win against North Carolina. I knew something was up when he had those black Air Force Ones on and his team decided to come out here. Dabo Sweeney like is going to call a timeout with three seconds to go. And now the students traditionally will come on the field at the end of wins. They have to be cleared off the field so that Clemson can run one more play. And I think Dabo Sweeney might want to get a few of his seniors on the field, I guess, to take the last snap on senior day with three seconds to go in the game. 
That's awesome. Man. Uh, it's the only reason I can think of why you would call this timeout with three seconds to go. You probably want your seniors to be out there for the last snap. Yeah, and you see the, the reaction from the fans as they're coming back out on the field again. Hey, man, they got three seconds left in the game. Get on the field. A lot of the seniors to have this moment. It looks like the fans want to go out there and have a snap with them, Bob. Huh? And Hunter Helms is a grad school quarterback. And so he will go out and take the final snap after starting his career as a walk-on. Now there is a flag down as this circus continues. Unsportsmanlike conduct on Clemson. Players coming onto the field. 15 yard penalty. Fifth down. So now they have to respot the ball before Hunter Helms can take one last snap with three seconds to go. Yeah, this is a bunch of Tom Foolery going on here tonight at the end of this football game. Never say never in college football. I haven't seen anything like this before, Bob. 